Welcome to another episode of Do Go On. My name is Jess Perkins, and as always, I'm joined by Matt Stewart. Oh, hello. Hey, quick question. How good is it to be alive? It's pretty darn good. And Dave Warnicky. I'm wow. back, baby. Wow, wow, wow. We told you he was fine. Yeah. We told you. We have been assuring people for weeks, Dave, that you're fine. Yes. And for some reason, they've taken that to be quite sinister. I mean, yeah, it's do, weird. Do they know what fine means? I, I guess not. And maybe that's on us because we haven't defined fine on this podcast. Yeah, that's true. I mean, we were trying to set a low bar. He's fine. He's fine. He's fine. We said he's, he's fine. He's not thriving, but we were lying because you have been thriving. I've been thriving. I've been surviving. And I have been procreating. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, I've uh, had a few weeks off. Thank you so much to everyone filling in. I've been listening to the show at home. A lot, lot, lot of fun to listen back. But I and myself and my wife yes. have welcomed a baby. Hooray! Oh, who's the father? <laughs> <laughs> Still unconfirmed. <laughs> oh, that's so gross. It's 2024, boys. Come on. Come on. Come, come, on. On. come on. Your wife can have babies with whoever Anyone. she wants. <laughs> okay. It's 2024. It's none, of your none of your business, mate. <laughs> <laughs> it's certainly not in my business. <laughs> yeah. No, that'd be rude for you to ask. Come on. But we're delighted to have you back. Thank um, you. Yes, and everyone's doing very, very well. Uh, very happy and healthy. So thank you so much. Very, very well. Uh, that rhymes with someone's name. <laughs> true, true. Y- your wife, Ella. <laughs> That's on the record. That's on, That's the, record. on the record. That one I on thought record. you were saying uh, Ben Queller. Yes. I Wait. Oh, You're- the father. <laughs> <laughs> Ella and Ben Queller. Oh, my God. Your stepdad to one of the three Benz's kids? Oh, my God. Three Benz's kids. What are the chances? What are the chances? But can I just say this? If I was going to guess, it would never have been Quella. I would have said Folds every day of the week. <laughs> oh, wow. Well. You're a, not, lay, you're a Lee woman, though, not the only you? One, I'm not the only one that Folds. You would have guessed Lee? Probably. Yeah. I don't know what's happening. Um, but Dave. It is great to be back. Yeah. And I am looking forward to the plethora of no longer a virgin jokes. Oh, so no, much. that won't happen. <laughs> um, we'll still find a way. Uh, and but- are you uh, you uh, going to be talking about it extensively week to week and you want people to ask you and probe you about details well, online? I mean, I've seen a few uh, uh, media personalities, comedians, yes. once they become fathers, launch dad podcast. And I was thinking, I've already got a podcast. Maybe that could be this show. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So yeah, that's yeah. all I'll talk about from Do now dad on. on. Yeah. <laughs> you want to talk about dad bods, give dad advice. Um, talk about yeah. dad interests, golf, beer, um, uh, the firm, uh, <laughs> what's going on, you ex-wives, <laughs> oh. <laughs> how awful they God, are. I've got a few of those. <laughs> you have a little piece on the side. Is that a dad thing? <laughs> <laughs> Is that a dad thing or just a my dad thing? <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm look. extrapolating a little bit from my dad, who's a real piece of shit. <laughs> no, nah, he's not. He doesn't have he's any beautiful. of those things. He's a great man. Beautiful man. Never worked at a firm. <laughs> Teacher, famously a teacher. I, I know so little about like the real world that I'm like, what? Imagine working at a firm, yeah. you know, with your briefcase, you got your tie on, yeah. probably catching the train in. My dad oh wore my a God. suit to work and had a briefcase every Holy day. Shit, was yeah. he part of the firm? It was some sort of firm. <laughs> wow, pretty crazy stuff. Do you reckon he could get me in at the firm? Now I'm a dad. He's retired, uh, so he has no connections for you now. Oh. But Dave, I have I have a, a business proposal for you right now, actually. Listening because it's been a while. Maybe you've had time to really reconcile this in your brain, really make this efficient. Could you explain to people just joining us for the first time what this show is? What this show is or what it was? What it, it was. used to be a history show <laughs> and now we talk about dads. <laughs> and Dave's not joking. If you do have any questions about the baby, ask him online <laughs> any time of day or night. Please do not. <laughs> Leave him alone. He's an open book. He's an That's open right. dad. <laughs> No, what we actually do here on the show is we take it in turns to research a topic often suggested to us by one of the listeners. We go away, we do a little bit of research, and we bring it back to the group in the form of a school report, basically. Mm-hmm. And the other two people, they sit back. they relax. relaxed. They're relaxed. Let it waft over them. Yeah. Like, <laughs> a, like a stench. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's what you do with a stench? <laughs> let it waft. You let it waft let it over you. Well, what are you going to do? Bring it to me. How are you going to stop a stench coming? Well, what I do is I leave the room. Yeah. <laughs> I run. <laughs> if I if I have to be in that room though, I'm like, okay, this you. is just going to pass. I'll let it waft. I take a really meditative type yeah, of, yeah. Type of approach to you it. You breathe it in. I, bre- I breathe through it. That's for sure. <laughs> you, know, you say you do a fart and you say, well, it's okay. Just let it waft. Let it waft. <laughs> let it waft. Let it waft over you. <laughs> and a lady doesn't fart. So <laughs> I was at a urinal uh, recently. Sorry okay. to big note myself like that. It wasn't at a firm. It was just in a <laughs> at a pub. But there was an old fella next to me, and he <laughs> he let one rip. <laughs> 
And he goes, I'm so sorry. <laughs> did, he, did he break down? <laughs> and I said to him, he goes, what? He said, I'm so sorry. And I said, mate, so- it's not here where. <laughs> And then did you shake hands? <laughs> and he said, I'm so glad are you I'm so glad you said so. He said he'd played as a scenario in his mind that he didn't say anything. And then I was like, uh, excuse me. <laughs> I, just, I just saw a single tear fall down Jess's face. <laughs> It was, it was such a funny interaction. <laughs> I am so sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> just to so sincerely yeah. apologize. And then for you to say, babe, it's not here where. <laughs> That's broken me. That's so funny. I yeah. need a minute. <laughs> Did you, did you let it waft over you? <laughs> I got out of there quick. <laughs> there are no tissues in here anymore. Uh, <laughs> I can't stop crying. That's so funny. <laughs> and I'm glad, I'm glad we had that nice big laugh because this podcast today is a really grim topic. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, uh, we, should, we should say it's Jess's turn to uh, waft, okay, uh, report on a topic, and uh, we usually start with a question to get us onto the topic. Yeah. <laughs> Jess, do you need a moment? I don't, I don't know. Is my face fucked now? <laughs> no, you look great. Great. Okay. Well, then I'm fine. I'm just going to let those tears dry naturally. Hey, can, I'll just say, if not here, where? <laughs> it's a safe space to cry. That just really got me. <laughs> Oh, it's such a nice feeling when that happens. You never know where it's going to come from. <laughs> you mean it's, a, a it's nice an feeling. old man <laughs> <laughs> You mean it's a nice feeling. You never know. No. It's a nice feeling when you just let a fart out. You never know what's going to happen. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> that's the best thing that's ever happened to me. Oh, I, did, I should say he was Irish as oh, well. Does that help? Perfect. <laughs> Even better. Yeah, it adds to it. Even better. Oh, that's so good. Okay. I'm so sorry. <laughs> that wasn't it. Oh, all right. Yeah. So, okay, here we go. So, I do have a question to get us onto the topic. But my question is, you won't know about this topic. So, can you guess which US state this story occurs Ooh. in? Maine. No. Oh. Is there any more info or that's it? Just a US state. Okay. Um, well, I'm going to have to say God's country, Ohio. It's not Ohio. <sighs> Nevada. Home nope. of Gary. Kind of cl- getting close. Indiana. No, no. A- Arizona? No, not Arizona. Oh, California. California. Here we come. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> what an angel. I, I like we- how you started <laughs> in a range that you couldn't hit and left yourself nowhere to go. <laughs> Don't worry. I think I can stick the landing here. Here we come. <laughs> you left that wa- waft out of you. Yeah. <laughs> well, I thought I thought maybe I could get a bit more breath in there and it just never came. <laughs> <laughs> Just committed to it. Oh, man, I'm looking forward to this grim topic. <laughs> yeah, but- <laughs> All right, we've got the laughs out now. No, it's kind of good, to- good to be in, in a bit of a silly mood because it is a it is a, 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 a pretty full-on story. It might, I don't know if this will, it, this might spoil it for some but really help other people. It's a happy ending. Thank you know? Goodness. I Thank think you. that might actually help most people. Great. So, and also, we can joke along. And not feel bad that it's not going to end well because often we don't know, we never know the, what the topic's yeah. going to be. We always just joke along, and sometimes, particularly on YouTube, people are like, they comment along, "Oh my god, I can't believe you're making fun of such a grim topic when this was going to happen half an hour." Yeah, we didn't, we know. didn't know. <laughs> we didn't know. And sometimes that's best. Um, but this uh, topic has been suggested by a couple of people: Matt Rowe from Sydney, Christina Gonzalez from Ventura in California, and I won't even really sort of tell you what. The story is, I'll just get stuck into it. Love it. We'll start at the very beginning. Feels like a mystery to me. Let's find out. There is an element of mystery, <sighs> yes. So, <clears throat> in the early hours of Monday, March 23rd, 2015, 
Intruders broke into the home of Aaron Quinn, a 30-year-old uh, who worked as a physical therapist at a nearby hospital. Aaron lived on Mare Island in Vallejo, California, not too far from San Francisco. Aaron and his girlfriend, 30-year-old Denise Huskins, also a physical therapist, were awoken to bright lights shining in their face and laser dots crossing their bodies. Oh, my God. A man's voice says, Aaron, lie face down. How do they know his name? Whoa. Aliens. Okay. Early theory. Yeah, aliens. I mean, those laser, laser pointers. Dots, that's classic. You know, alien. Torches, alien. bright lights. Yeah. I love that. I've seen the X-Files. Face down. Probe. They oh, love that. Oh, yeah. Well, that's what the red dot's looking for. <laughs> Where to stick it. <laughs> the probe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's they're looking just for the with it. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> a little foreplay. I, again, we don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> but we know it's grim. Yeah. We know it's oh, grim. A happy ending. So have some fun where you can. Oh, yeah, have fun yeah. where you can, like a- I think, is a great approach but to this story. T- absolutely terrifying. People have broken in, yeah. lie face down. Yeah. Denise a is- A probe with a happy ending. That's all the aliens need to do. Yeah. You know? Oh, okay. Yeah, make it good at the end. Make it good at the end. And they go, oh, you know what? Okay. Okay. It's been great to meet you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Could you drop me home? Yeah. Thank you so much. All's well that ends well. Denise is then instructed to tie Aaron's hands behind his back and both Aaron and Denise have blacked out swim goggles placed over their eyes as blindfolds. I hope they can swim. Okay. Now it seems like it's like an alien version of jackass. Is that how the Americans say? Jackass. Jackass. Water. Um, I thought it could be that, or it could be Peter Vanden, who didn't bag him. Oh, the Dutch master of the pill. Yeah. Of the- The pill. Uh-huh. That's how they say it in That's how they say it in, in Dutch. Dutch. Pew. The pill. Beautiful place. Dutch. Oh, I love, I love the it. Dutch. <laughs> so, they have goggles put over their eyes and headphones placed over their ears. A pre-recorded message tells them to be calm and that- um, they'd be up, they're going to be asked a few questions. It's a sleep app. <laughs> Just chill. Well, actually, it did have like wind chime music oh, underneath it. I'll say Trombley Virtual's voice start speaking. Yeah. Hello. He's going to shush you to sleep. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that should be pretty doable. Yeah, that's doable. <laughs> oh, that should be so doable. Can't, we're going to a- ask some questions. Yeah, you're going to be asked a few questions, mostly relating to financial details, and that Aaron and Denise are going to be given sedatives. So they they they're given this like liquid to drink. They essentially say like if you don't just take it, I'll inject it. So just drink it. They drink it. They reckon it's it's NyQuil. Like a, it's an antihistamine, pretty strong. Puts you to sleep. Oh, okay. At this stage, the intruders have said this is a robbery. So they're asking questions about like financial details. So they're like, okay, well, they, they want our bank details. They're going to take his stuff and clear out our bank accounts. They're kind of going like, all right, fine, take everything, whatever. Yeah. Just don't hurt us. Um, they're separated into different rooms of the house. And eventually one of the men says to Denise, we have a problem. This wasn't meant for you. This was meant for Andrea. Who's that, you ask? It's, the, it's especially Denise wondering, who the fuck is Andrea? Yeah. Well, she knows who Andrea is because that's Aaron's former fiancé oh. who has been who had been living at the house until the previous September. This is in March. So, they'd broken up the year before. Andrea also worked as, at the same hospital as them. Right. So, she knows who Andrea is, but this has been- Planned for Andrea, not Denise. Wow, geez. They are slow in executing a plan. Like, over a year has passed and they haven't checked in yeah, to make like sure Andrea's months. still around. I know, yeah. And it doesn't, like, I don't know what physical therapists earn, but I wouldn't have thought they'd be your yeah, number one target for a, a financial type robbery. Yeah, like yeah. a big heist. you targeting million and billionaires, surely. Yeah. Is it the same as a physio? Yeah. Is it, they call them that in America, physical so. therapists? So they, I think they do okay, but yeah, they're not. It's not you know a finance bro living in a fancy mansion. Yeah, this is a, a nice little exactly. house. There's no but Picasso on the wall to Nick. That's yeah. it. Yeah. So it was meant for Andrea. So that's pretty scary. What a weird thing to say. Yeah. It's like, all right, mate, are you going? On, are you saying it's over now? Yeah. Otherwise, just plow on. Play I, 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 p- play along. Plow on. I see. Continue on. Yes. Let's, let's. I don't need to hear a blow by blow, mate. Yeah, if you've made a mistake in your plan, how's that my problem? Yeah, that's Figure not my problem. problem. Either either end it now, fine, yep. and go, sorry, it wasn't meant for you. Or- We'll leave you to it. Shut the hell up and yeah. get on with it. Or how rude to say, sorry, we thought this was Andrea. Mm. Yeah. You're not you're like, as good. Oh, great. Or is this all part of it? They're just there. The jackass. 
they're there to mess with her in particular. Oh. A little psychological. Oh, maybe Andrea's behind it. You don't look suspicious if they say it was, yeah. it was meant for her. Oh, that's oh. clever. Okay. I, I, but we do still think it's aliens. But Oh, well, that's an early theory, that's, yes. I mean, A for Andrea, A for alien. Mm. I rest my case. <laughs> Can you argue with that? I can't and I won't. Both start with A, don't they? Oh, my God. I didn't even- Yes, there's a whole other <laughs> level to what he said. <laughs> The intruders tell Aaron that they're installing a mirroring app on his phone and a camera in his living room so they'll be able to monitor him because they're going to take Denise and they're going to contact him to arrange payment. They essentially put, like, red tape around a, a section of his living room. Oh, and they're, they're, like, you, you, they're you, from bureaucracy. Yeah, classic red tape. <laughs> yeah, try and cut through that, mate. Yeah. Like a red duct tape. Good luck. Maybe it's not even red. They just tape this area and, like, you have to stay here so we can be watching you. And if he goes out of that room or or contacts police or anything, that they'll know because they're monitoring him. That's scary. They stuff. tell him call in sick, use Denise's phone to say like she's email work and be like a family emergency's come up. I'm out of town. Whatever. Um, we'll contact you. So yeah, he's not to contact police under any circumstances, or there will be dire consequences for Denise. Aaron heard the sound of his Toyota Camry pulling out of the driveway with the intruders and Denise inside. That's the car of a millionaire. That's yes. right. That's right. And he's a, an enthusiast. Only enthusiasts know the sound of the, that beautiful Camry <laughs> You purr. know the sound of your own car. <laughs> I can identify a Mazda 3 anywhere because mum has one and so I know the exact oh, that really? sound. Way yeah. to dox your mum. Now people know <laughs> that she is one of three million cars on Australian roads. <laughs> it's got to be more than that. More than three million? I reckon. Our driving population would be about 15 million. I reckon more. I reckon heaps have got a Mazda three. Yeah, what about fourteen million of them? And have this is like 3? a two thousand and eight. You know, you got to think every year they're bringing out a new Mazda three. <laughs> oh, that's true. I forget the year. Time does march on. <laughs> um, so he'd know the sound of his own car or a car, whatever. Shut up. Um, it, it was his car they took. Um, so they've left, and he kind of manages to use the armrest of the couch to like push the goggles off his face because I think his hands are still tied up. Um, and he- they wanted him to email on Denise's phone. Yeah, true. And he was tied up. How did he get his hands free at any point? I'm I, not sure I, I about guess that. Maybe, maybe they- he was using hands free mode on the phone. Ah. Or they assumed it'll probably take him about 15 minutes yeah. to get this off. By that time, we'll be gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe, yeah. So he so he remembers seeing the time on a digital clock, and it was exactly 5 a.m. I love when you see that. Bang. On the hour. Yeah, it's satisfying, isn't it? Or 12.34. Oh, That's a fun one, too. Why? One, two, three, four. Got it. God. I'm with you. That's satisfying. I was like, okay. That kind of annoys me because it's like not 12.30. It was the name of my first crush. <laughs> 12.34. I miss you, 12.34. <laughs> she was so beautiful. Anyway, so he tries to stay awake, um, but the effects of the sedatives take over and he passes out. I mean, that's a bonus, isn't it? Get a good nap. Because yeah. it would be hard to have a sleep after something so traumatic. Yeah, so it is. Yeah, yeah probably you once you wake up aid. properly, you're not going back to sleep for like a week. Yeah, so it's good that he got in 40 winks. Yeah, he got a few hours sleep because he woke up later that morning around 11.30. Maybe not 40 winks then. That's probably about six winks. Do you reckon? Is that 40 winks is an eight-hour sleep? Is that right? Oh, I don't know. Why is that a saying? I don't know. One wink per hour. Yeah. So you have a 40-hour sleep? <laughs> yeah. think, That's one, too long. Yeah. I think you'd feel shit after a 40 hour sleep. But what if, um, unless they mean 40 winks and they're talking really about blinks, so it's really 20 blinks. Um, oh, so what, it's a 20 hour sleep. Because what, what is a, a blink if not a double wink? A double wink, that's right. Understood. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to have you boys together again. <laughs> yeah. Makes sense. As I'm trying to build drama. Yeah, well, absolutely. Yeah, it's I, terrifying. Should, I just want to say that you told us. I did, yeah. To be silly off topic. Because the real topic's grim. Yes. That's and we're true. trying to follow your instructions and we're <laughs> sorry. I did give that instruction. I am off the record, gripped. Yes. On Me the record, too. making fun. That's but right. That's right. It is terrifying. Yeah. So he's woken up a few hours later, the tape's around. He- yeah. He, there's a camera mounted on the wall in his living room. This is such a big job. Mm. And the fact that they have fucked up Denise and. Yeah. And his, his it- ex fiance. If that's true. Or if yes. it's mind games. Yeah. yeah. And also, yeah, you're also wondering how much of what they're saying is true. Yeah. Like, maybe they're not really monitoring at yeah, all. Yeah, that camera might just be one of those plastic fake ones that yeah, someone's ma- put ma- up. Put the mirroring, they don't, maybe they don't even know how to do that. Yeah. You know, maybe it's a just a 
two person operation and it's all bluff and bluster. Yeah. But you'd be so scared to make any decisions in case yes. you think you're calling a bluff, but really you're endanger- endangering Denise's totally. life. Totally. You'd yeah, you'd have no idea. Yeah. You'd have to play along just in case. Exactly. Yeah. Unless he was some sort of, you know, they didn't realize he's like James Bond and he understands all these things. Nah, he's just a physical therapist. Right. Not just an important role. Yeah, that's that was a bit dismissive. He isn't a spy. What uh year are we talking? Twenty fifteen. It's so recent too. Yeah, wow. it's only a few years ago. Um, so, he started to receive text messages and emails from the kidnappers, giving instructions of the payments he needed to make in order to release Denise. Um, so they, oh, they- that'd be the name of the film, wouldn't release it? Release Denise. Mm. That's good. They were what about de- please release Denise? <laughs> no. Yes. No, it's a yes from me. Please. <laughs> what, are you saying police or police? <laughs> I wanted to please, say- Please, please release Denise. Yeah. What about that? Is that a good compromise? We say please, police. Release no, Denise. I think we go, please, please. Yes. Release Denise, police. Oh, yeah, no, you're right. You know what I mean? I think Jess is right there. Yeah. Like, it's a quote from the police. Oh. Oh, that's good. Okay. Like, the first bit's in, uh, you know, quotation marks. Dash, oh. police. Oh. Starring Gary Sinise. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And Gary Sweet. <laughs> Just oh. for a little sweetness. Two Gary's better for one. A little bit of sweetness. Better yeah, okay. Than one as well. <laughs> and Denise Richards. Oh, yeah, got to yes. get Denise in. And yeah. Denise Scott and Denise Ding Dong Drysdale. <laughs> Catering by We Spars. Oh, perfect, yes. Perfect. Can Rachel We Spin? I mispronounced both of her names. <laughs> one of said, them. You said one, Rachel. <laughs> one of them is not normally how to pronounce. <laughs> Rachel. The other, I was worried about the second and I failed on the first. <laughs> Can Rachel We oh, I said Rachel. right. <laughs> It's hard to say Rachel wrong. I was really trying not. to mock you, but <laughs> Rachel it turns out what you did was actually way harder. <laughs> Rachel <Thank laughs> means that means a lot, actually. <laughs> um, it's pronounced Rachel. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I thought it was Rachel. <laughs> no, no, it's Rachel. <laughs> so they want. Uh, they're demanding. I've seen a couple of different uh, figures. It was either fifteen or seventeen thousand dollars. They're asking. I think they knew he had, like, 20 grand in savings, so it's actually quite nice they weren't, like, clear the whole thing out. Leave yeah, some. Leave, but that's not enough for this operation. That's right. It seems like not, a, not, enough, st- not enough of money for the level of effort. You can't disappear with that money for, for a long time. Yeah. Like, you probably need to after this kind of crime. That's it. Mm. And it, it's a, that's a good point and something that, that uh, comes up later, maybe. If people ask for 15 grand, you're thinking, do you really have a camera on me? Mm. Yeah. Yeah, the, the setup kind of you're talking about yeah. would cost this sort of money exactly. probably. And yeah. It must have been months of planning. And if there's multiple of you and you're splitting it, what are you going to yeah. get? Like, I don't know, if there's three of them, like five grand each or something? Yeah. That's not worth Doesn't it. Doesn't make sense. 15 grand, that's what a camera would cost, isn't it? A camera or a Camry? Oh, no, I'm thinking of a Camry. Camry. 2015 money, though, you got to remember. <laughs> yeah, yeah, true. So that, it's a different time. Yeah. I think now that would be probably 17 grand. Shit. 18 grand. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah, life yeah. changing money. Yeah. yeah. That's for big, three actually. people. Yes. For three people. Yeah. Six each. Four. Yeah. Okay. Quick math. In today's money. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm getting out of bed for six grand. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm walking to the door and saying, thanks for that six grand. You yeah, know? yeah. 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 Or yeah. wherever they I'd even, you know, drive somewhere for it. Would, oh, you, would you? Yeah. Would you kidnap a man and a woman? Uh, you know, if that was the job. <laughs> for six grand. <laughs> no questions asked. Yeah. I'd do anything for six grand. <laughs> I don't know if I would. Anyway, so they're they're saying uh, they're making arrangements for Aaron to drop the money off on Tuesday night. So this all happened on a Monday, like wee hours of the Monday. He's now woken up. It's it's afternoon of of the Monday. They're saying tomorrow night, Tuesday night, and if the payment's made, then they'll release Denise Wednesday morning. And Aaron's sort of like he, his mind's spinning a bit. He's still like pretty groggy, and he's becoming increasingly worried that. It, like, he cannot trust these guys th- that they'll actually release Denise or if the plan is to meet, uh, is is a trap and they're going to take the money and then kill him as well. Like, right, So, they yeah. want it in cash. Yeah. So, and so he's allowed to leave the little red square then yep, to, to go, go to the get bank. the money. Yep. yep. Well, that's when I would go to a payphone or just wander into a, you know, some sort of a, a private dick office because mm-hmm. they never said anything about dicks. Yeah. They said you can't go to the cops. That's right. What about a PI? Oh, you know what I mean? Yeah. 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 Who can then call the cops? We're in America, I assume. Yep. Like everyone California, has a gun California, there. California. You go to a go to a dick. Those dicks have got guns, don't yeah. they? Yeah. Well, every dick has a you gun. You know who else has, has a gun? Gun shop. Oh, ah. you just go get your own gun. Yeah. 
Oh my god! But do you want? Why do you want the gun specifically? Um, Unrelated. Oh yeah, I just thought it'd be cool to have one. <laughs> I mean, when in America? I think you know it's pretty I mean? easy over there too. So I think you just walk in and get one. Yeah, you could. Pro- I mean, you could go to the bank. You could even say to the teller, "Hey, I'm being robbed." Yeah. Then they call. Yes. You know, they probably and have there's protocols. No, there's no way they'd um, misinterpret that and and put an alarm, pull an alarm on you, well, and I mean, you get tackled by security. And you're like, no, no, I'm getting robbed. Yeah. And they're like, oh, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> but they've already tased you. And, and you're, the, they're like, what are you talking about? Mm. You're not being robbed. You're here asking for money. Yeah. You're doing the robbing. Oh, yeah, they say, I'm they're being are- robbed. And they're like, oh, another person complaining about our fees. All right, we get it. <laughs> we we get have it. to pay for the overhead somehow, okay? <laughs> okay? We've got a really fancy office here and we <laughs> need to pay for that. makes a lot of money. <laughs> yeah. Okay? He draws free? a large wage. <laughs> our lunch is free every day. You think that just appears? Yeah. You've got to pay for that. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> I don't know what it's free. like working at a bank. I don't think it's that. Is that a firm? Yeah, the that's banking firm. firm. The banking firm. Well, do you want to hear what he actually does? Oh, yeah, that'd be great. Um, Because he's aware that they're monitoring his phone and he knew he couldn't call 911 without potentially endangering Denise's life. So he decided to risk calling his brother, who actually is an FBI special agent. Oh, this is what I was talking about. That's a, he's a dick. <laughs> he's a dick. He's like a- he, But he's not a, a PD. He's not a private dick. He's like a federal dick. Federal dick. Um, I'm thinking- I don't got- know. What does a dick mean? Does anyone know what a dick means? I mean, in this scenario, if you have to ask, yeah, <laughs> you don't get it, man. <laughs> yeah, okay, so it's just, it's a need to know. Oh, basis I think we thing. found a new podcast virgin. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Doesn't know what a dick yeah, is. Yeah, makes two of us. <laughs> <laughs> no, Dave. <laughs> I'm trying to help you. Yeah, like, God damn it! I hope Ben Queller is well. Anyway, <laughs> I am. Is Weller? I'm thinking. The, uh, first, I, th- I was really impressed by their operations. It seemed very professional. Now I'm thinking they only want a small amount of money comparative to what they want. They haven't. They've they've claiming that they've got the wrong woman they've kidnapped, and they haven't worked out that his brother is an FBI agent. Yeah, yeah he's not terrible a good target. target. Yeah, not good. Oh, I'm starting to think that it's his brother doing a Bucks Day prank. <laughs> Jackass. <laughs> yeah, that's a bit of fun. What? But he's saying. He's calling his brother from his own phone that he believes to be mirrored? Yeah, because he reckons that he could, like, if questioned about it or whatever, he could be like, oh, my brother was supposed to be coming over that morning, uh, that afternoon. I was just calling him to say don't come. But he didn't consider calling from a different phone? But they're watching him anyway. Oh, they are? Well, the camera's on. Right, but he's but allowed to go to the, the bank. Room? No, no, no. He's like, he's still at home. Oh, right. Yeah, he's still at home now. Okay. So- I'd get, when, On the way to the bank, what I would do- is use any other phone yep. to call the brother. Okay, that's an interesting approach. But, but he, actually, he uses his I phone. So, he just uses his phone. I mean, that's way more efficient, and I should have thought of that. And maybe, like, if Denise's phone was still there, just use that. That not that the one that- Didn't they say she, they had to use her phone? I guess so. I for, don't know for if an email. Still there. Oh, yeah. For an email. So, not for a f- phone call. Phones can't do that. Um, <laughs> so, anyway, he calls his brother, um, and, yeah, like I said, sort of- Reckons he can come up with a bit of an excuse as to why he had to call his brother if he's questioned about it. You know, he can make it look kind of innocent. Um, he calls his brother and his brother says, call 911. <laughs> call 911. I'm really busy. You want the full <clears throat> force behind you. Like, just call 911. Just do it. Can you call for me? Because yeah. they're mirroring this phone. Yeah. And, and they in- said they will kill her if I do this. And you're in the FBI, so they'll take you quite seriously. Yeah. Any chance you could just take a minute to call them yourself, yeah. brother? No, nah. so Aaron oh, calls nine on one. This is a that's not a good bro. By this point, it's just before two p.m. So Denise was taken around five a.m. Shit, they're long gone. He calls at two o'clock in the afternoon. Police turn up at Aaron's home, begin a bit of uh, their investigation. They're looking around the house for evidence. They're gathering statements from Aaron, and Aaron explains um, that the night before. The, uh, Denise had come over to his place and the two had planned to talk through some issues they were having in their fairly new relationship. Aaron's ex fiance Andrea, also worked at the same hospital as Aaron and Denise, and Andrea and Aaron had had a pretty messy breakup the year prior due to Andrea's infidelity. The rejection and the heartbreak had been really hard for Aaron and he and Andrea had been texting a bit recently, which had caused arguments for Aaron and Denise. Essentially that night they were discussing if their relationship was going to move forward or end. They were at a bit of a crossroads. That's when this happened? Yeah. 
Oh, wow. So through the course of the evening, Aaron said that he had apologised for betraying Denise's trust. He um, promised to go to therapy, cut contact with his ex. Physical therapy? And Because <laughs> the I know a guy, he would have said. <laughs> Me. Me. <laughs> <laughs> or you, whatever. Um, and they basically decided to move forward with their relationship. They resolved their argument. They'd gone to bed and then wake up in the middle of the night to this happening. Lovely. Can I just check something, Bob? Please. Did you know when they said, oh, they said to Denise, oh, we thought you were Janet or whoever. Andrea. 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 Mm-hmm. Was that within earshot of him uh, or was that just directly to her? I'm not sure if he was. I think this is when they were in separate rooms. So uh, maybe yeah, he I was just wondering if it was for his benefit or not. So it was just for her. I'm just wondering if she's in on it or not. You know what I mean? Denise or Andrea? Either or both. Right. Okay. <laughs> But Probably Denise, only one of them. Too. But Denise is in the other. Room. Yeah, because you're wondering like who's reported that. Is he said? I heard them say. Yeah. Or as Denise later said. And if he if he was the one if he heard it maybe you know maybe it was maybe Denise in, is in on it trying to mess you know trying yeah. to I don't know I don't know I don't know what these broads can get up to. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm so sorry mm-hmm. I added that out. <laughs> I didn't feel good as a feminist. <laughs> This is what a feminist looks like, okay? Yeah. Imperfect. And I'm- Okay. (laughs) Okay? Yeah. Sometimes bit of the sodge. Yeah. Okay? Okay. Are feminists, are they misogynistic? Yes. Yeah. (laughs) Head to toe. Uh Uh-huh. Day in, day out. Yep. Nine to five. Yep. And the hours in between. That's right. (laughs) Which (laughs) I think that's what- And the hours outside of. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm I'm the biggest misogynistic asshole in the world. Yep. But am I a feminist? Yes. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. That's right. Okay, yeah. ladies, so back off. Yeah. Yeah. Good to eyeball the camera for that. <laughs> back Feels- off, ladies. That felt right. Yeah. Normally, I'm telling women to lean in. So, every now and then, you just got to say a bit of room, actually. Yeah, you've actually led it a bit too far. Yeah. Okay? okay? Still have personal space. All right. All feminism aside, I still have personal space. Yeah, okay. Anyway- so, Aaron uh, told police about the home invasion, about the goggles, about the pre-recorded audio and the headphones. As police continued to question Aaron, they were pretty flabbergasted by the story he was telling. At one point, Aaron recalled that during the home invasion, he said he was shivering and he, and he asked for a blanket. And one of the men said, oh, I'm sorry, I forgot how cold it is because we're all wearing wetsuits. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> That's a twist. <laughs> Which pol- police were like, the fuck? Why? And later- Did I- he- Was he able to see him before they put the goggles on? Or they were pretty much lights in the eyes. He never yeah. really saw anything. Yeah, never saw anything. So- <laughs> but did he hear them flip, flip, flopping around with flippers on? You know who doesn't know what's appropriate to wear on Earth? Aliens. <laughs> Shit. Yeah. 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 They just went to the first clothing store they could find. It happened to be Wetsuits or Us. Yep. So, the detective from Vallejo Police who was sort of in charge of this is a man named Detective Matt Mustard. (laughs) Oh, my God. Uh, That that has got to be close to the perfect name. And Matt is such a boring name. I'm like, there's nothing you could do to Matt to make it great. What if you put a little mustard on it? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Matt Mustard. I personally prefer mayo, but that's that's good stuff. He comes up a lot. He thought- Does does he have a father who's a colonel? He- I can neither confirm nor deny. Do you so- his dad was in Cluedo? <laughs> yeah. That would be wild. What a claim to fame that would be. Yeah, my dad was in a board game. And no wonder he's what a detective. Yeah, yeah. Follow, you know? Followed in Makes dad's sense. footsteps. Yeah. That's nice. Anyway, so well, he- Well, no, that weren't his footsteps, was he? He was a murder suspect, not a detective. Anyway. Sometimes he was a murderer. That's how that game works. <gasps> what? It's pretty exciting. Spoiler. So, yeah, he said they're wearing wetsuits and <laughs> Matt Mustard- <laughs> They are on an island. You said that. Well, that's right. And- <laughs> But a, a stupid detail to say. Oh, so sorry. We're wearing wetsuits. I'm, my head's a little hot. I'm wearing a blonde wig. Aaron later was sort of like, I guess it kind of does make sense in terms of not uh, leaving any kind of evidence behind. And also, they're on an island and there's only kind of one road in and out. So, if something goes- a bit pear shaped. Can they take to the water? Right. And, and also, when you're diving, I believe you piss in your own wetsuit, so, so you, you don't need warm. to use the toilet. You would be warm. Oh yes, you don't need to use a toilet. That's right. What? What? You, you piss in a wetsuit. You've never pissed in a wetsuit. 
Come I on. I don't think so. Live a work. little. I, n- I knew you'd spewed in a wetsuit multiple times, Bob. I didn't know you were pissing. Joke's you're, on you. You're... wasn't wearing a wetsuit those times. <laughs> <laughs> was just in my togs and a, a life jacket Mate, on. Mate, it is coming out <laughs> from all ends for you, isn't it? It was. When you scuba dive. It wasn't good. I'm not allowed in the water now. Um, anyway, so Matt Mustard, here's that wetsuit. Here's Aaron's story. And he is like, this is absurd. And more and more and more believed that Aaron wasn't a victim, but a suspect. Oh, oh my gosh. He's like, this story doesn't make any sense. Right. So, they question neighbours of Aaron's. No as one- a feminist, I went straight to thinking the women had done it. Because, you know, as a feminist, I'm drawn to the women. But statistically, in a story. who is likely to do it? But you want to believe that they- they're capable of Yeah, this. that's what I, that's I right, think. Yeah. Uh, a woman could be a criminal. And know. should be. And should be. <laughs> yeah. If they want. Women should be criminals. They I've have agency, as far as I'm concerned. So, they question <laughs> the neighbours. They're looking around the, the house. You see the group of guys with In wetsuits, wetsuits <laughs> carrying blacked out goggles? Nobody reports seeing or hearing anything th- that night. And so, they're like, how does Denise just disappear without anyone hearing or seeing anything? How does that happen? And so, why is he following these rules? He probably isn't. He's told this story. What rules? The rules about the tape oh, and the yeah. mobile phone. Why would he be following those rules if he was in on it? But we're, I guess we're, we're only taking his word for it that he did follow those rules. Yeah, I guess so. And the fact that he called his brother, maybe that was just uh, him trying to create some sort of alibi or whatever. Who knows? Why would I have called my brother if I was in on it? No. Mm. But yeah. why, my question is, why, why would he do it? Because the, the yeah. aim is to drain his bank account. He's already got that money. Or, Matt, is, it, is the aim for him to be the hero to his girlfriend? Or something, yeah. like, stupid like yeah. that? If, you know, one of those movies where people are really stupid. Yeah. Or you did say it's grim. Maybe it's because she gets murdered. Mm-hmm. And then you can say, oh, it was a robbery gone oh, wrong or something like that. Oh, my God. That is grim. And that's kind of where Matt Mustard is leaning. Okay. So this is verbatim. Um, the the documentary American Nightmare uh, came out on Netflix only just in January, and it has like some of the actual uh, interview footage. So this is verbatim from Matt Mustard to Aaron Quinn. I'm going to be honest with you. Your story is very elaborate and in some ways far fetched in my mind. I'm here to find the truth. I'm a puzzle maker. I put a lot of puzzles together. <laughs> I don't think she was kidnapped. He's not kidnapped. a puzzle solver. Puzzle maker. But he's a puzzle but maker. But when you think about it, he is making the puzzle. Yeah. You know? Because at first I was like, you fucking idiot. <laughs> and he also keeps saying in relationship to this. And I'm like, nope, that's not That's not how. It's yeah. in relation, in relationship to this. I'm like, okay, well, you're an idiot. <laughs> allegedly. Oh, uh, just because. just saying allegedly because he's still alive and an active police officer. Yeah, well, no, I think that's a place where you're going to be soon. But I think, um, <laughs> I think- uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> language is uh, fluid. Yes. And I think the way we speak is the way the language is. Beautiful. And I, I don't think you can't say that's not how you talk when someone is talking exactly. like that. Exactly. One woman's physiotherapist is another woman's physical therapist. Yeah. Wow. Th- we think. We think. We think. At least they do similar things, I reckon. Anyway, this is for- this goes for a while. Verbatim. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. And this is still in relationship to the story? Still in relationship <laughs> okay. to the story. I don't think she was kidnapped from your home. I think something bad happened in your house and it happened between you and her. Do you think people kidnap people for $20,000? They don't. Dave, you were saying that. You're like, that's too little money. And they're wearing what? Did they swim in wearing their wetsuits? I mean, come on, man. It doesn't make any freaking sense. So now I get out my puzzle pieces and I start figuring it out. Okay? How do I make it so that you look like a monster? Then it continues. Whoa. Maybe she overdoses. Are you playing with prescription drugs from work? It's okay if you are. And you take too much and she overdoses and you're like, oh, shit, what am I going to do? I can see that happening too. And then he tells him there's blood in your house. I don't know if it's hers yet, but I'm going to presume that it is. I'm going to presume that she wasn't alive and kicking when she left the house. And then it is another quote. Maybe you called Andrea's name out during sex and she got pissed and you carted her out of there. And then Aaron says, I did not do that. And Detective Mustard says, yeah, you did. <laughs> what? what? Yeah, you did? So he's he's like, this is yeah, what happened. You did. Yeah, oh, it's, it's really he's uncomfortable Fox to watch. It. He, he is a puzzle maker. He's making up bits and forcing them together. <laughs> yeah. yeah, That's what happened. Yeah, But it's so funny that the first thing he said that didn't happen is like, no, that did happen. 
I would have been like, oh, wait, so did the other thing happen? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because I said another whole thing and you didn't say anything to that. And it must be that there's part of, like, interrogation techniques where you do kind of push them, push them, push them in the hope that they crack and reveal something. So a part of me is like, okay, m- maybe he's doing that, but it's it's really uncomfortable he's to watch. He's not a puzzle maker. He's a frazzle maker. Yeah. He's frazzling this guy. Yeah, he's given the full frazz. He's got the full frazz. <laughs> maybe that's the name of this movie. Full frazz. The full frazz <laughs> with- <laughs> Matt Mustard. They've also, they've taken Aaron in and they've, like, given him, I think they took his clothes to sort of test for stuff. So, they've just given him, like, prison clothes. And they sort of start by being like, sorry, man, it's just all we have. But really, they are treating him like a suspect. And it's he's there <laughs> sorry, for so man, it's, long. It's hard to treat you treat you with respect when you're wearing those, that outfit. Yeah, yeah. I just, I see those stripy pants and I'm like, <laughs> this crook. Yeah. Yeah. Know. Sorry we had to put the ball and chain on you, but it's like there's a one, one size fits all. You, yeah, yeah. You have that part of the costume, you have to take it all. Yeah. Sorry. You understand. <laughs> you get it. So he ends up like Aaron sitting there like, why, uh, why are you questioning me? Like, go be looking for the what, for Andrea, for, for not Andrea, for Denise. Exactly. Got him. Say Got the, him. Say the wrong name. Say the wrong name out loud. He Just like up- he did during sex. <laughs> yeah. And that's why he killed her. So he, Aaron agrees to a lie detector test, a polygraph. Um, this is 2015 when they've well and truly been defunct, right? Yeah. Debunked they- even. Have they? Are they bullshit? Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's fun. Um, and this the the polygraph happens at about four thirty in the morning on the Tuesday. It's so late. It you know it's he's been in the police station for so long. At the conclusion of the test, FBI special agent Peter French sits down opposite Aaron and says, "Right, Aaron, there's no question in my mind that you have absolutely failed this test." And he continues to like interrogate. He does the same sort of thing as Mustard did of just like. Telling Aaron what happened. French and mustard. What a combo. Yeah. French mustard. Mm. Dijon. <gasps> That's but- why they could be the Dijon boys. <laughs> That's nice. Yeah, that's cute. That's that, nice. That's a cute team. Do you think, like, because you know how in It's Dave's Report and you and I were the Sass Twins, yeah. do you think you guys could be the Dijon boys? Can we be the Dijon oh, the boys? The Dijon boys, yeah. <laughs> I like that. That's cute. Adding a little flavour. Mm. My little Dijon boys. A little extra something. Anyway, so they- he, so They've said you failed- You failed te- this. But do you want to fail a lie detector test? We've failed to detect any lies. Oh. You don't want to pass a lie detector, do you? Well, I guess you do because, like, because they'd be like, did you kill Denise? And you say no, and it says you're telling the truth. It would be really fun if he got him on that. That would be good. And they're like- failed to detect a lie. <laughs> they're like, hang on. He might be right there. <laughs> huh. Huh. You failed the lie detector test. So, after more huh. more interrogation, and again, he's been there for like 18 hours, Aaron's like, huh. I need a lawyer. Like, what the fuck? Like, he's gone in thinking he's going to be giving a statement to help them find the people that have taken Denise. And and now he's being questioned and interrogated. So, he's like, I need a lawyer. Oh, my God. For anyone out there, as soon as you go in, you need a lawyer straight away. Is that right? Even when you just go in to, like, file a police report or well, something. Well, as soon as they're bringing out a, a, yeah. a lie detector test, mm. yeah, you yeah. should talk to some representation. What are the rules here? Should we just ask for lawyers? Probably. Straight away. Okay. Well, that's, uh, isn't that- Who do you think this is? Oh, that's yeah. why he's here. I thought that was court mandated. No. Oh, no. Do, do you want to- I'll give him a microphone. Speak up. Uh, hello. I'm <laughs> Sean. I'm from the firm. <laughs> I'm just quietly taking notes. Continue uh, incriminating yourselves over there. Thank you. Sh- wait, 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 what? I'm not. Wait, you're here. I thought you were here with me. Uh, no comment. <laughs> God, these sneaky lawyers. This is good. I'm Sean. <laughs> yes, no, we got that, Sean. Turn his mic off, Dave. <laughs> Fuck it now. I'll just slide that down. Sorry, Sean. No offense. But, you know. <laughs> Leave it to the pros, mate. Exactly. Falls crowd. Anyway, so, <laughs> so Aaron. I like gets- his catchphrase. I'm a Sean. <laughs> I'm a Sean. <laughs> I'm a Sean. <laughs> I have the A. Sorry, he looks like he wants to say something else. Just slide in the mic, right? Uh, you can be assured by me, Sean. <laughs> Case assured. That was. <laughs> can I call okay. court a Sean? This sitcom is writing itself. <laughs> the Dijon boys and Sean. <laughs> Sean of the Dijon boys. So uh, Dan Russo, a defence attorney, arrives at the station early the next morning. He sees Aaron, pale and puffy-eyed. He tells police that Aaron has complied in giving the lie detector test. He's given DNA samples. If they don't plan to arrest him, then he's leaving that Aaron's going to be leaving with Dan right now. So Dan gets him out of there, takes him to his office, gets Aaron to recount the story of what's happened again, tells the story a couple of times, and Dan said in the documentary, in my heart I believed him, but there's no one in North America who's going to believe this story because it's 
it's bonkers. It makes no sense. Mm. It's wild. But if it is true, and I want to believe, how awful would that be that you're being locked up? Mm. Well, they're not going out looking for for yeah. it. They're telling you that you did it. And you're, yeah, would no. That, that would be a real American nightmare. Yeah. Just not having them believe. Is that the name of the? Yeah. And um. So that you remember? We can't remember a person's name. Anyway, yeah, go <laughs> on. What, <So> racial. <laughs> It's the full fugitive style. I didn't kill my wife. Yeah. <laughs> but And, yeah, I the, the longer it goes on, he's behaving to me like an innocent man. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. But also, like, hell. I would sort of be thinking if I was the cops, like, okay, well, then let's look for evidence. And if we can't find anything that backs up what he said, then that is more incriminating to him. Or we find evidence that does back up what he says and we follow that evidence. You know it, what I mean? Yeah. Th- I'd be working as hard to prove him wrong. You can maybe spin it to two teams, one yeah. trying to prove him right, one trying to prove well, him wrong. Yeah, yeah just yeah. have one team leaving the police yep. uh, building. Yeah. Yeah, to look, firm. to look for a missing lady. Yeah. Because yeah. So, there is a missing lady either yeah. way. Yes. Uh, but, yeah, it's uh, it's very confusing. The, mm. the blood that they found made me think, oh, shit. But I mean, there could be blood from when they abducted her. Yeah. Like, there's, it's not clear where the blood could be from. Yeah. Yes. Uh, this is not good police work, I don't think. Oh, that's an interesting, interesting observation. I think this might be. I think they might be doing this uh, poorly. Hmm. Well, let's find out. Okay. <laughs> Because 31 hours since Denise uh, went missing on the Tuesday afternoon, San Francisco Chronicle crime reporter Henry Lee receives an email with the subject line, Denise. Attached is an audio file and a woman's voice says, Hi, my name is Denise Huskins. I'm kidnapped. Otherwise, I'm fine. Oh, wow. That's good news. The message mentions a news event from that day as proof that this was recorded very recently and personal details that to confirm that it's really Denise. Like she says, like, my my first concert was Blink-182. Oh, my God. Yeah. Me too, Denise. Really? There you go. Wow. Okay. Does she actually say that? Yes. <laughs> Did <laughs> she actually say that? <laughs> really? Yeah. That's awesome. Yep. Me and Denise, eh? Just so I can um, fake uh, kidnapping you, what would you, Matt would say Blink-182, what would you say? I don't know what my first concert was. I think it was, um, do you remember the gigs that would put on, they were Coke Live and Local. It was supported by Coca-Cola. Oh, yes. And it was like a bunch of bands, like The Living End performed at one. I think I might have seen the Veronicas at one of them. That's it. It's pretty fun. That's nice. Awesome. Um, Mine's some 41. Okay. Good to know. Good to know. For so, my 13th birthday. 13? That's sweet. My sister, my sister took me. That's right. What a legend. That's really cute. I think I was 14. Late bloomer. <laughs> So embarrassing for you. <laughs> so the um, crime reporter, Henry, he forwards the email and the audio file to the Vallejo PD. The clip is played for Denise's parents and for Aaron, who all confirm that the woman speaking is definitely Denise. So she's alive, that's, or at least was today. That's awesome news. That is great news. Her family, who are relieved to have, have even more hope that Denise was alive and well, were then confused as to why Detective Mustard turned his questioning of them to Denise's character. How many boyfriends had she had? Oh, my God. How long has she been in those relationships? Was she a big drinker? Did she party? That sort of thing. It became pretty clear to Aaron's attorney that the police line of questioning had taken a turn and moved from accusing Aaron of murder to suggesting Denise was behind the whole thing. So they've gone, okay, well, she's alive, so he didn't murder her, so she's behind it. (laughs) Anything but... Certainly no uh, kidnappings happen in this town. Even though she just said, I'm kidnapped. Um, without a twist. He's a puzzle <laughs> yeah. maker. Yeah. He's, he's making, making these puzzles. puzzles. Hey, man, we got a, a, we got a round block here. We want to put it through that round circle. He's going, I'm going to freaking shove it through that triangle. <laughs> I'm going to shove it through that triangle right now. Shave it down. I'm going to jam it in. Get me the planer. <laughs> Get me a plane. I'm, no, no, no. I don't want to fly. I want to take a bit of off of this wooden block. And that you know they're so incompetent. He's all of a sudden he's flying somewhere, yeah. and he's like, "Oh, this is what I wanted. It's nice. It's not. It's yes, I will have a champagne. Yes, but oh, it's not what but I was trying to do." But when I get back after this short two to I'm three week need break, a plane. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So then, in a very bizarre twist, a very strange turn of it's events. Already so bizarre. I, I love it. It's amazing. On Wednesday morning, twenty fifth of March, Denise Huskins reappears. What? <laughs> she turns Don't girl up. Style. <laughs> she turns up on her dad's doorstep 
at around 9am in Huntington Beach, which is 400 miles or 640 k's from where she'd been taken. How far, sorry? 640 k's. Wow. wow it's quite long a distance. 400 but miles. Not on an island anymore. No. Oh, it's just a small island that's like a- t- It's like almost like a neighbourhood of Vallejo this, uh, right. in California. Right, right. So, this is Huntington Beach, 400 miles away. What the fuck had happened in the last 48 hours? But that night, about 9pm, 12 hours after she reappears, Vallejo police hold a press conference. Now, keep in mind, they haven't spoken to Denise yet. A Huntington Beach officer, like, briefly interviewed her, but that was it. The Vallejo officer says in the press conference that while Denise had initially agreed to cooperate, they hadn't heard from her since. And furthermore, Aaron Quinn's story had been so elaborate and crazy that they'd had a pretty hard time believing him and had not been able to substantiate any of his claims about the events of March 23rd. At this stage, he said, Aaron Quinn and Denise Huskins have plundered valuable resources from the community. What? So the press have an absolute field date. They begin reporting that the kidnapping was probably a hoax, orchestrated by Denise herself, or with the help of Aaron Quinn. And if true, both Aaron and Denise could face state and federal charges. What would the point of that been if they were both in on it? Yeah. What would the point have been? Well, Dave interestingly just mentioned a certain film. Um, oh, yeah. Give me back my wife. <laughs> no, that's <laughs> fugitive. fugitive. I'm mixing up a uh, ransom where he says, "Give me back my son." Yeah. <laughs> With uh, the fugitive where he says, "I didn't, I didn't kill, kill my, my wife." wife. <laughs> he loves to yell about his family. That guy. Yeah, and I mean they were two different guys, but still. <laughs> yeah. But um, is that not the same actor? No, the other one was uh, Mel Meninga. No, Mel Brooks. Mel, Mel, Mel Gibson. Mel. <laughs> uh, yeah, because I because uh, I could just imagine Harrison saying both. I think. Yeah. So the film I would refer to, Gone Girl. Gone Girl had come out the year oh. before. Oh, okay. And for anybody who hasn't seen it, oh, sorry, Gone Girl is a film about a woman who discovers her husband's cheating. Should we say a bit of a spoiler here? Spoiler. In case you want to I mean, it? I think by saying anybody who hasn't seen it. Spoiler alert. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I, just, I, saw I, it. I, I just remember something once on this show and I felt oh, bad yeah. about no, it. Spoiler alert. I remember, because it was a, quite a well-loved film, but I remember going to see it and uh, hating it. It was pretty full on. Oh, okay. Yeah. I just thought it was bad. Oh, okay. <laughs> I I think I found it a bit intense. But I can't remember any, anything about it. Well, uh, Except yeah. the bit where he covered up his chin and that was like some sort of sign of love or something. Do you remember that, Ben Affleck? Oh. Oh, no. So I want to do this, it means I'm telling the truth or something like that. Oh. Man, anyway. I really don't remember anything yeah. about it. I don't remember that. Um, ben Affleck was in it? <laughs> ben Affleck. Rosamund Pike. Got she an Oscar nom for it. She was good. She was great. So it was good. Why did- uh, Maybe I just got out of the- well, Hang on. Now, now we're out of the statute of limitations of the spoiler alert if people have skipped ahead. Oh, yeah. Oh. So Sorry, spoiler the spoiler alert. still going. Uh, she just, a woman discovers her husband is cheating, plans and executes an elaborate faking of her own death and frames her murder on her husband. Right. So, the media is calling it the Gone Girl case. Oh. They are immediately just going, this is this is just like that movie. Right, because the, the and the spoiler, this is a serious spoiler, she comes back. Yeah. And is, at, I'm alive and does a press conference and things. This yep. sounds like, a, like they're jumping to conclusions here. Yep. That they have no evidence for. That seems weird. That the why would they be doing that? I, can't we trust the fourth estate? You know what I mean? Aren't they there to hold up a mirror? Wow. Is that what they do? I zoned out for a bit, to be honest. Well, you're a journalist. Yes. You, tell, you tell us what's the job of the of uh, journalists. The U.S. media is different. Oh, okay. You uh, didn't you didn't study U.S. media? Ah, uh, no. I, I think I was specifically sort of training to work in the Australian oh, okay. media. That's where um, bit, uh, well, nothing ever bad happens in the Australian media. Nothing. Yeah. No, we're great. Always are uh, very uh, ethical. But it does also seem like sub is a bit more um, taken a bit more seriously here. Uh, and over there, they just speculate wildly um, yeah. for a bit of fun. What about above judice? <laughs> above judice, that's fine. Yeah, okay. That's fine. Before the court. So, so you can't be reporting facts that haven't been- Essentially, if you're reporting facts, well, I'm saying facts in quotation marks there, or like theories about something- before it's even gone to court, does that only count if it's a criminal case? Which at the moment doesn't sound like there is one. No one is before. No one's been arrested or anything because it's like no one knows what happened. <laughs> but, but Denise and Aaron could be charged with a few different crimes, and they're alleging crimes. The media, basically, they're alleging crimes, which means then at, when they do, if they do eventually go to court, the members of the public that would make up the jury have already been fed all of these. Theories and all of these. True. Don't, don't they sometimes they just withdraw those articles and say, "Well, now it's a criminal case. Sorry, we can't speculate anymore." Yeah. Yeah. They go back and they go, "Did you have? <laughs> did you read that? Did you have a, the edition of the uh, Sunday Times?" We gotta write that out. 
Oh, I'm not saying Australia doesn't do it. I'm just saying not. it's not really- You're not supposed to. You're supposed to have an impartial jury. Anyway, so at this stage, we're going, okay, Denise is behind it. Is Andrea behind it? Is Aaron behind it? What has happened to Yeah. You? Has Ma- Matt Mustard, the puzzle maker, did he make this? It sounds like a puzzle that's been made to me. Yeah. He Did he make a case to try and solve it? Maybe. I'm, where, I'm where, thinking it's Mustard. Where are you guys sitting at the moment? How are you mustard feeling? Mustard in the library you think with mustard. the candlestick. You also think aliens, so Matt's yeah, got I those think, two I theories. Yeah, I think Mustard's an alien. Dave, what, what are you feeling with all this? I'm not sure. I feel like I don't want to- Dave's worried he's going to guess it correct and ruin the whole no, episode. No, no, I'm thinking it's more likely to to maybe be Denise because, like Gone Girl, there's an objective. In this case, maybe it's money. Uh, then it obviously hasn't worked out because he has called the cops and, and panicked and then they've sort of seen through it. So then because of that, mm. she's had to come back and say, oh, I'm actually, I'm fine. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. I can't see the reason that he would make up this case because the only thing that he and had like, to yeah. gain was money. And the only thing- well, was, was money you already had and also she's not dead. So exactly. What if, did he have to if, gain? If she was dead, you would go, okay, I can see where he's made this up. Yes, an elaborate cover of- That's right. He's protecting himself. Of her death, yeah. Yeah. So, look, it's, it's, it's kind of all over the place. So, let's rewind a little and hear the story from Denise's perspective. Oh, I love it. So, the night of the home invasion, uh, they tell Denise, we're going to take you, but they say, we're going to bring you back in 48 hours. <laughs> they, they're very upfront. Um, she's placed in the trunk of Aaron's car. And it's kind of a weird, it's a very weird experience because, like, these these guys that are kidnapping her are obviously doing something horrendous and really, really scary, but then at times are, like, being quite considerate. Like, they've grabbed a comforter off a bed or they had a comforter in the car to, like, make the, the trunk more comfortable for her. Right. What's a comforter? Like the doona. Oh, right. Is it hard for her to understand them because they've got snorkels in their mouths? <laughs> It is oh, hard. You'll be back in four hours. Oh, all right. I found the trunk very cold in here. <laughs> yeah, so she's placed in the trunk. Right, but they're car. being nice. That's good. She's driven for a little while. Well, no, it's not. Um, she's driven for a little while before the car stops, and she's taken out of Aaron's car and put into the trunk of a different car. So Aaron's car's kind of dumped. Now remember, they were both sort of given this sleeping po- potion <laughs> stuff. They're, they're both being sedated. Um, she's trying to stay awake, but she's. Uh, groggy and terrified. Um, she's trying to pay attention to like how long the drive is and and where they're turning, just to like clever have some sort of idea. But obviously, it's so hard without being able to see, and you don't know. She hears the engine of the new car, and like it had this deep rev, and it reminded her of a Mustang. She's like, "What are we? What are we in?" They drove for hours. Um, I think she fell asleep for a part of it. Um, eventually, she's taken out of the trunk. And she can sort of tell it's the early hours of the morning. Like she can, she her, she's still got the goggles that on, but she can sort of kind of feel or sense, see a bit of the light. So she's like, okay, it's daylight. She can smell pine trees. She could feel the sun. Um, and then she's she's taken inside a house. And I I'm not going to go into heaps of heaps of detail about Denise's experience, only because it is pretty harrowing and scary and recent. And uh, I'm aware that this is a comedy podcast. And right. So, so they do not treat I, it. I talk about it a little bit, but I'm not. Okay. I'm just going to sort of, I'm brushing over it a little bit. And I didn't <clears> want people to be like, you brushed over it. I've done that on purpose because of the tone of this podcast. So we're also very quickly assuming she doesn't have anything to do with this. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it's important to the story if you want to hear her detailed account, which, I mean, she's she's shared it on podcasts and on this documentary very fucking courageously and very cool. So, you can watch American Nightmare if okay, you want to. I feel bad saying that. No, 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 but, like, but that's the point. That's the whole point and that's exactly what I wanted you to feel at that point in the report because- you Manipulated me. Thank you so much. Yeah, I'm very sneaky. <laughs> because that's good storytelling, sort of, Dave. Yeah. Honestly, Don't hold it against Jess that yeah. she tells a good story. I would yeah. never hold a, a puzzle against a puzzle maker. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well done. I'm a puzzle maker. I have a journalism degree. <laughs> I puzzle. No, I, yeah, because, like, it is confusing. And the documentary is also sort of set up that way too where at first you're kind of like, fucking Aaron, you absolute dog. You think, yeah. you think Denise is dead. And then at the end of the first episode you see Denise and you're like, oh, okay, she's not dead. Well, what's happening? So it is It is a bit all over the place. But um, anyway, she is, she is taken to this house and... Um, Taken, it, another film. Another good title for Give this Give me film. back my daughter. <laughs> Do you say that? I have a very specific set of skills. I will That find was Connery. You. I don't know why. I mean, it's closer. Yeah. Closer than what I did, which was, to Dave, was Harrison Ford twice. 
Not Mel Meninga. I can't Mel believe Meninga. It. Mel Brooks. Mel Brooks, even. Didn't even get his first name right. Mel Gibson. Gibson. Did I say that? You no. said Brooks. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> first, he said Mel Meninga. Who's Mel Meninga? <laughs> Uh, rugby, r- rugby league, league legend, player. yeah, who Queenslander briefly, briefly had a uh, political career. Ah, he's yeah, very funny, famous <laughs> footage of him at, in the same press conference. He announced he was running for parliament. He also quit. <laughs> and it's like honestly, it's like two minutes in. He goes, "Oh no, I'm sorry, I can't I'm do sorry, this." Can't, and I'm he st- pulls I'm his mic the- off and he, goes, <laughs> "I'm stopped. And I can't do this." And he gets up and walks out. Incredible video. That's, That's so good. good stuff. But like I think like he's like an immortal or invincible whatever they have there. Yeah. He's like very but the thing that I know about him is that he did that press conference. That's good stuff. And you don't hear that on many true crime podcasts. And that's what sets us apart. <laughs> yeah. yeah is that true. during a really tense moment, we'll just go off on a tangent. And that's what we're good at. So anyway, she's in the house, and while they're in the house, it seems like it's just Denise and one of the kidnappers. And he locks her in a bedroom and at one stage tells her, This wasn't meant for you, this was meant for Andrea. He tells her that again. And she's also kind of like the fuck? Like, what does why, that- yeah, yeah, why are you telling me this? He tells her that he's part of a black market company that kidnap people for money. Um, oh, throughout, Jesus. you know, their interactions, he, he reveals that the these guys are ex-military. Um, he tells her that Aaron's been given instructions on what to do and the plan is to release her in 48 hours. And she wants to believe that's true, but how can you trust that your life is safe at the hands of people who just kidnapped you? So, yes. So, she's like, okay, well, that all sounds good, but, like, if that- at no stage does that actually make her relax, you know? You're like, all right, cool. Well, I'll just put up with, you know, I'll just I'll just snooze for 48 hours and then I'll go home. Great. And like I was Where's saying- Where's the telly? Yeah. Can I- Is there you a got, TV in here? You got Netflix? What sort of- uh, What's for lunch? A little <laughs> yeah. hungry. Just been in a trunk for a while. Um, like I was saying before, their interactions were sort of strangely polite. He was kind of like, yeah, kind of nice to her and then it almost seemed like- I don't know, apologetic, but in a way that's more unnerving than if he was aggressive or or threatening. Like it's kind of you're sort of like, oh, what are you are you manipulating me? What's going mm. on here? More than 24 hours after a kidnapping, the man at the house tells her that his company has lost contact with Aaron. So but we know that Aaron was at the police station. Uh, his associates are on their way and as part of their protocol, she'll have to have more sedatives before they arrive. And he says, don't engage with them, like just pretend to be asleep. They're not as nice as me, which again, it's just a weird thing to mm. say. Um, so a car approaches, she hears multiple voices in the house. Um, this is when they decide that they need to record a proof of life, that audio that we heard that proves that, you know, she's alive and and it's current. And uh, the others leave. It's just her and one of the kidnappers in the house again. And it's a really, like, psychologically confusing and challenging time and a a bit of a content warning here. And, again, I'm brushing right over it. He's being really nice to her and and acting like he's trying to help. And then on the flip side, uh, she is sexually assaulted twice in the time that she's held in the house. Jesus. And then later he shows her a video of her father speaking to the press, saying, like, if she sees this, just know the family's here, be strong. As if he's trying to, like, encourage her or make her feel better or, or give her confidence. And she's just like, what the fuck is this? Mm-hmm. She talks about it feeling like a long game to just break her. And she's so confused and she's so angry. So, it's it's awful what happens. But then in the early hours of Wednesday morning, he tells her it's time to go. How, there's this other team as well. Yeah, where the fuck are they? And the, so, this- and- all these, like, I mean, is it just this one guy pretending there's way more? Or, oh, yeah. Or because 20 grand or 15 grand or whatever it was, it's making less and less sense. Yeah. As, well, how can that be the motivation for this? Yeah. It's all, none of it adds up. No. Nah, it doesn't make, yeah, it doesn't is make any sense. Is he still wearing a wetsuit? Unless they're being paid by somebody else yeah, to do this. Party. And the, the, the <coughs> ransom is just like, I don't know, something. A cover. Yeah. Yeah. Something. But what's in it for them? Yeah. Uh, like. Yeah, I don't understand. It doesn't make sense. But, but did she see ever see the other team? No. She heard them. Okay. But he's the only one that uh, I think comes into the room. So, yeah, he's like, it's time to go. He says, I can't drop you off in the Bay Area. There's too many cops looking for you because, you know, Aaron went to the cops. <laughs> Said not to. So, he's like, I'm going to take you directly to your family. And no doubt she's like, is he or is he going to take me somewhere and kill me? Yeah. Like, what the fuck is happening? Um, again, she's sedated. She's put in the car. Goggles on. She falls asleep. She's shaken awake hours later. And she all she can make out through the tiny gaps in the goggles are glimpses of the car's white exterior, but she can't see the guy. She doesn't know uh, anything. 
Has she ever seen him or she no. always had the goggles on? Always right. had the goggles on. I mean, could the, all the motivation just be that he's like a rapist and he's, you know, this is all, what, yeah, I don't yeah. know. Yeah, what is it? Exactly. Yuck. It's so confusing and really strange and an awful, awful thing. And it, for a lot of it, it just continues to get shit. But then it gets better. So just, you know, okay, that's what remember, she said. Happy just ending. hang in there. It's okay. And we only know this has happened because Denise is alive. So, you know, that's nice, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> I I put this up I for the vote. I would just watched the documentary when it first came out and I was like, yeah, that's a, that's a really interesting story. Yeah, great. It's really gripping. And then as I started writing it, I was like, we are a comedy podcast. It is a- <laughs> Hey, we've covered it's a tough we've one. covered some grim ones. Yeah, that's true. Remember the fight at the urinal before? That saved it. <laughs> Everything's fine. Right, it is. I mean, it's. I mean, as grim as it is, it's super fascinating. It's really fascinating. I'd have no idea what's happened. Yeah, yeah. And you do feel like that up to this point for sure. So he says, "Look, Aaron's gone to the police. So at some point, you're going to have to talk to them. There's two things you can't tell them. You can't tell them that any of us were in the military, and you can't tell them about the sexual assault." And he says, we're going to be watching you, so if we find out you say anything, we'll come after you and your family. Oh. So then she's sort of like, oh, fuck, all right. So he gets her out of the car, tells her to keep the goggles on after the car drives off, take them off once you've counted to 10, you know, like just make sure he's out of sight. So she hears the car drive away, counts to 10, takes the goggles off, and she's free. And she realises she's been dropped off just around the corner from her father's house. And her father's not there because he'd gone to Vallejo as soon as he was told they that she'd been kidnapped. Um, so a neighbour took her into the home and called the police. A local detective turns up. He interviews her a little bit um, before saying that he's got a Vallejo detective on the phone and essentially they're kind of like offering her immunity and she's like, immunity from what? Because she has no idea what's been happening in the time that she's been gone, the media frenzy, the accusations, the press coverage referring to her ordeal as a kidnapping hoax. And she doesn't want to lie to police, but she's scared of saying the wrong thing or saying too much and putting her family's lives in danger. So eventually she also gets an attorney who advises her not to make any further statements to the police because if she says any small thing that contradicts what she's already told them, they'll use that against her. Yeah, because they've already made their mind up, sort of. Yeah, yeah. Uh, is, is it possible to request a new police force? Yeah. Can we get a new force? For the, for the you world? Know, they, sometimes the world? They, they request a new jury, yeah, 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 a yeah. new judge. Yeah. Maybe we just I'm get not a new vibing force. with these police. Could I use a different police? They're doing an awful job. Yeah. Can we get a new set? Can we get some new police Can we just go somewhere else? And it's funny, Matt, This because- crime happened over a long uh, range of area. Can we get the force from one of the other ones? Yep. You are- you are really hitting something, yeah. So, anyway, she's she's following that advice. She's trying not to say any of the wrong things. She's trying to get back to Vallejo as quickly as possible to speak to the police um, and to her lawyer who's there. And the media have a field day reporting that she's now refusing to speak to police, which she isn't, um, and that her behaviour towards the media is very suspicious. And this oh. is the behaviour, this is the behaviour, this is the behaviour. She's wearing a hoodie and she's avoiding the many, many press parked outside her dad's house. Oh. Uh, that screams guilty to That's me. That's sus as. She's Sorry. a real piece of work. I actually was starting to believe her. Yeah. But she's wearing a hoodie. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she's like trying to stay away from press I after w- just going through a traumatic ordeal. I wear hoodies when it's cold and I am guilty. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, we know, mate. <laughs> Hence, your lawyer's here. <laughs> yeah. You're not allowed to be in the room with us without him. Can you turn him. up Sean's mic? I just want to Sorry. check up and said anything wrong. Uh, uh, hello, it's Sean. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, just remembering what I sound like. Uh, uh, my client uh, is doing a great job on this podcast. Okay. Thank you so much, Sean. Okay. In your legal pr- opinion, I, I'm also a big fan. <laughs> okay. Of of Matt. Can we get a new lawyer? <laughs> Can we? I'm, he's really grown on me. <laughs> yeah, because he's a fan of yours. Anyway, so the Thursday morning. Tw- Thanks, Sean. Sorry. Yes. Uh, did I say I, I'm doing this job pro bono? Oh. And also for free. I love you too. Bit of a thought it was a comedy. Thought I'd try and do a joke there. <laughs> That's not bad. Thank you so much, Sean. You can use that. Thanks for chipping. I can have that. Absolutely. Oh, we'll edit you out of saying that. <laughs> oh my god, I'm doing. Uh, I'm making puzzles, and you form the sentences. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so turn Sean's mic down, Dave. Please. Yeah, fuck no off, Sean. No offense. Fuck off. <laughs> 
On Thursday morning, so 24 hours after she was released, Denise goes to Vallejo Police Station to give a statement. And again, she's walking in there like, I'm going to tell them every single thing I know so that they can track these people down, you know, because I, I, I paid attention to stuff. I remember details. Sick. I'm going to tell them. So she goes in. She gives her statement. Detective Matt Mustard conducts the interview. An FBI agent is there as well. His name's David Sesma and her, her lawyer and stuff are there too. And once again, Detective Mustard is interested in details of Aaron and Denise's relationship. What a- f- <sighs> And what a perv. He's- This guy is no good. Yeah. Gets her to detail the events of the home invasion, what happened after she was taken from Aaron's home. She gives as much detail as she can about the lengths of the drives, um, you know, everything she remembers that, that she tells them. Their former military, their, you know, she, she listed a couple of different things that this kidnapper had sort of revealed through conversation. Oh, he's like, yeah, 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 get to the- What, 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 yeah, what, yeah, what, yeah. what, what bra size yeah. are you? <laughs> what name was he yelling at? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where are you in your cycle? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just so, so weird. She's hoping it can give them an idea of sort of like a, a radius of area to look, you know? Yes, good on her. Her lawyer in the doco says, like, he thought police were- believing her, they're listening to her, but then he noticed, again, their questions move to accusations. Why didn't you scream? Why didn't you fight back? All that sort of stuff. Like, didn't you? Did you make any noise as you left the house? Why they, not? Well, because they told me I couldn't or they'd kill me. Yeah, and I was heavily sedated and terrified. Uh, I was blindfolded. Yeah. I didn't know what was going on. Denise's lawyer and Aaron's lawyer, they agree that the couple should not speak to each other until the interrogations are over to avoid police being able to claim they conspired together to make sure their stories match. But here's the thing. They hadn't spoken to each other and their stories do match. The details match. Wow. Anyone would be like, that's a good sign. Yeah, they both- but they both knew about the wetsuits. Anyway, so the next day- That would- that makes it feel like specific sort of military as well, you know? Yeah. Maybe they're, you know, they're- uh, Divers. Yeah. They're, you know what Navy they call them? Navy SEALs. Yeah, yeah, yep. Yep. <gasps> Maybe they were just SEALs. Just SEALs. <gasps> Serving in the Navy. They roof were- Roof SEAL. Yeah. Oh, my God. Roof, <laughs> oh, roof. roof. That's how they got in. When your roof is getting lost between the like it and the moss and your mortar isn't where it ought to be. Give it back that old appeal with a visit from Roof SEAL. one 800 7 Roof, roof. <laughs> I can never. I remember jingles, but never the phone number, which is probably the main thing they Start want me to remember. Again. Oh, and the not very the whole thing, thing, just like just the one eight hundred seven. It's definitely seven zero oh, seven zero. Oh, oh. But I don't know what the middle part. Middle part. The middle part. Are you looking it up, Dave? <laughs> uh, one three hundred thirty six seven zero seven zero. So yeah, if, one three hundred thirty six seven zero seven zero. If, if, seven if oh. listeners out there. Do have the problem where their roof is getting lost between the locket yeah. and the moss. <laughs> cool and their mortar sale. isn't where it ought to be. Apparently you get a free roof inspection. Should we invoice them for this? Yeah, I think you can do that. <laughs> <laughs> I think you can do that. Yeah. Just gave you an ad. We did an ad on spec. Uh, here's what it'll cost. Oh, we'll take it out. Has it been published? Yes. Yes. We'll, we'll clip it out. We're we'll petty. clip it out, yeah. <laughs> We're petty bitches. <laughs> we'll bleep it out. Bleep, 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 bleep. Bleep, bleep. bleep. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So, so, you were saying that normally you would see that as a great sign. Yeah, you'd be like, this is good. Two completely separate people but telling the same, same story. story. Matt Murdoch is a fuckhead. Mustard. So mustard. Who's Matt Murdoch? Another rugby player? <laughs> <laughs> Matt Murdoch. Is that Daredevil? Yeah, probably. Oh, and we just, ben just, Affleck again. Just to be clear as well, Matt Mustard is, in your opinion- Oh, a Allegedly. Well, bleep that saved out. Saved it. But, but, no, but, I saved it. But based on what we've heard here today, yes. based on what you've seen in a the documentary- A review of this documentary. Exactly. Yeah, he does Great. sound no, like he is like a bit of an asshole and super incompetent mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and he just cannot let his biases go. In your opinion. In my opinion. Nailed and allegedly, <laughs> the fact that he calls himself a puzzle maker- Yeah, it's weird cringe, isn't it? He's such a stupid fuckhead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, it felt like that when you said it at the start, but I'm like, you know, this guy could maybe he solves the puzzle. And I gotta say, because if you're watching a movie and, and then someone comes in and says, "I consider myself a puzzle maker," yeah, I'd be like, "This guy's everyone, a you're thinking killer. douche, douche, douche." Yeah, 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 yeah. Like that character's been written as a douchebag. Mm. Yeah, piece of shit. And this is just a real life Unlikeable. person saying that. Yeah, he's like a Poirot type. Yeah, but a joke. <laughs> yeah, clearly but, not good. Yeah, puzzle solver is what surely what surely. he meant. Surely, yeah. 
It's embarrassing. You're picturing him. I'm like- sure he left the interrogation room and went fucking puzzle oh. solvers. Whatever. Shit. Oh my god, this, it's on tape too. <laughs> it's so embarrassing. I hope that never I- comes around to bite me in the ass. Yeah, hopefully this is never on a documentary or a hopefully comedy I'm podcast. I'm not wrong about this. <laughs> about this case. So the next day, multiple times. Yeah, the next day, Denise is once again taken into interrogation room, more questioning, and told that there are a lot of inconsistencies in her story. And she's reminded that it's a federal offence to lie to an officer, so if she wants to change any details of the story, now is the time. And in the American Nightmare documentary, her lawyer recalls taking the FBI officer outside. He's taking him aside and says- and killing him. Killing him. Wow. He admits that, that feels on a right. doco. That feels- You know, normally I'm not for killing, mm. but mm. yeah. I'm getting pretty frustrated. Can only imagine what the lawyer was going through. And in the end, isn't that who we really care about in this story? <laughs> Right, Sean? Don't turn his mic on. Um, I nearly did, sorry. So, but he says to him, there haven't been any discrepancies in her story. How can you possibly say she's lying? And the FBI agent says, haven't you seen Gone Girl? Oh, my God. (laughs) An FBI agent whose job it is to solve crimes and investigate is going, this is like the movie. That is- Isn't that embarrassing? So embarrassing. And then the, the, the lawyer's like- that's confirmation bias. Yeah. Like- I don't say that to a lawyer, you fucking idiot. Yeah, crazy. Because that's the, like the whole the whole time they've been concocting a story and then trying to jam what's happened into it. Yeah. Rather than just hearing what's happened and figuring out what, what's going on. Yeah. It feels like they're doing it ass backwards. The, and yeah. the only part that matches with Gone Girl, can I say, is that a, a lady disappears and everyone thinks she's dead and then comes back. Yeah. In the movie, she doesn't plot with her, her partner to create this elaborate story. There's no big kidnapping. Yeah. yeah that's the funny thing. Been, nothing else is similar. They've been malleable in their accusations to the point of they're guilty. Oh, there's more information. Well, they work together then. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it, they're never like, there's she's more dead. information. Oh, she's then. alive? Okay. Oh, well, then she's guilty. She's in on it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And he's like, and uh, like an alien uh, has crash landed on the planet and starts hunting people. Haven't you seen Predator? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Haven't you seen it? Have you it's seen just it? like that. It happened in a movie. <laughs> that I watched last weekend. Yeah. It's, it's just wild. If he happened to watch a movie where they were innocent, they would have been home free by now and they would have got the bad guys. But unfortunately, no. Watch one where a fraud was committed. So, it's cr- yeah, it's wild that a, a person is saying that truly. And that they would say that out loud to a lawyer. And at this stage, Denise is facing prosecution for lying to a federal law enforcement officer. She's looking at being sentenced between a year and 18 months in federal prison. God and long term, losing her reputation. How is she going to get work in hospitals? Like, how is she going to function in society? Um, how would you trust anyone at all? That's it. Like, from, just from what she went through- yeah. That would that makes it very hard to trust. But on top of that, like then being accused. Yeah. And meanwhile, the kidnappers are still out there and police aren't bothering to look into them. So Aaron and Denise feel exposed. They know where they live. They like no one's protecting them. They've already threatened them that they'll take their families. So they're terrified. And from the press perspective, the story kind of is over. They move on. And then, so this is all by like Wednesday. But then on Saturday, it's the 28th of March, the crime reporter, Henry Lee, once again receives an email. It's from the kidnappers detailing the events of the home invasion and kidnapping. (gasps) Photos have been included. One image is of a gun with a flashlight duct taped to it. And once again- What's their motivation for this? Hey, just letting you know what we did wasn't ridiculous. It was a real thing. We're not getting enough credit. Yeah. Everyone's laughing about the wetsuits. Well, I'll tell you. They made sense (laughs) in case we had to jump in the water. Yes, it was hard to walk around and our legs were sort of rubbing together a little bit. And I've had to go to the- the, Make that- Yeah, you had to go to the chemist to get a little cream. But apart from that, it was a very smart idea. Yeah. Give us some credit. Come on. (laughs) Can I tell you something cute? Sure. My sister-in-law has these corduroy shorts and she calls them her woof woof pants because when she walks they go woof 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 woof. woof, woof. <laughs> that's really but cute. I think that's really cute. And your sister-in-law, how old is she? 40. <laughs> my woof woof pants. These are my woof woof pants. <laughs> woof woof. She's the best. And your sister-in-law, is uh, she a toddler? <laughs> no. She's a 40-year-old woman. Who I adore. That's so fun. Anyway, so there, there's photos. Henry Lee, he- Forwards this to the police. No response. <laughs> One of Aaron's lawyers also receives the email, and in the email it mentions the use of a Mustang convertible. Oh, my God. She knew the engine. Denise said the car sounded like yeah. a Mustang. Oh, my God. Your, your kidnapper's driving around in a convertible? How? Yeah. I like how you've been saying trunk, by the way. Yeah, for, for the Americans. But 
D- like, imagine a Mustang uh, trunk. Trunk's better than boot. I agree. Boot. Boot yeah. sucks. But Boot's anyway. already got another meaning. Trunk only means one thing. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so you're saying it's probably a bit squishy. It would be very squishy. Probably. But there's also photos of the location where Denise was held and it matches the descriptions <laughs> she gave. Wow. So, she was- What's fun? So <laughs> good. I'm imagining like five dudes driving around in a convertible in wetsuit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he would just look so weird. <laughs> <laughs> there's nothing one to, guy. Nothing, I feel like it's one guy. Nothing to say here. I think there was one guy that- I think one guy took her and the rest maybe went a different way or something. I don't know. So it's just it's a funny, funny image. Still, Vallejo police do nothing. What is going on? Oh my on? god, they just cannot get past it. Here's the motivation: more emails come through, giving kind of clues as to the identity of the kidnappers. Again, sort of being like college educated. I think they maybe said ex-military. In oh the my email. god, are they and making they, a puzzle? They defend Denise oh. against claims that the whole thing's a hoax. They're defending her and saying it's not a hoax. She's not a liar. They say that Vallejo Police Department has 24 hours to issue an apology to Denise Huskins, and if they don't apologise, then these kidnappers will strike again. That makes it sound like that does make it sort of sound incriminating to her that they go. It's not trying- helping Denise. No, so. no, but go. still, and also give her some money. <laughs> still, the police do nothing. Right. A couple of months go by, and in June. Police are called to a break-in at a home in Dublin, California. It's about 40 miles from Vallejo. A family were asleep and a man entered the home and attempted to abduct the 22-year-old daughter. Her father was able to fight the man off and the mother called 911 and police arrived and were told the man had escaped and run off and by the property's fence they found zip ties and duct tape. Fuck. The daughter informed police that a cell phone had been left behind and police took it in for evidence. Dublin police tracked down, I think I think there was like the account holder and they call and a woman answers the phone and they ask if she knows <sighs> whose number this is and she says, oh, yeah, that's my son. Her son's name is Matthew Muller. Police look so him up. So close to Matt Mustard. <laughs> police look him up. He's a former Marine. Uh, is that what I said? No, Navy SEAL. Close. He's a Harvard Law graduate and has previously, of, previously, oh, my God, been a suspect in a couple of different sexual battery cases. A suspect. The cops don't want to set off alarm bells for Matthew's mother in case she alerts him that they're looking for him. So they say, oh, we'd, we'd just like to get his phone back to him. Do you know where he is? Finally, oh. the smartest thing these cops have done. And this is a new set of cops. New uh, set of cops. Dublin. Dublin PD. To be sure. They they go, <laughs> do you know where he is? And she goes, yeah, yeah, he's staying in my cabin in South Lake Tahoe. So they get in the fucking car and they go straight away. Cabin surrounded pine by trees. pine trees. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. And a Mustang. Detective Misty Caruso joins the officers to go and make the arrest. It was her first case as a detective. Oh, wow. Um, as I fu- said, you got to get in a fresh batch of cops. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. She, she's, a, it's a, she's a fresh detective. As far as ambushes go, it couldn't have gone better. They arrive, kick in the front door. They quickly locate Matthew Muller, Muller um, inside the cabin and he is handcuffed. And Mr. Caruso in the documentary, she describes him as being really calm and composed the entire time the police are detaining him. And a search of the house yields several pieces of evidence that link him to the, the attack in Dublin the night before. They find zip ties, duct tape, just like what was left at the crime scene. They find toy guns that have been painted black, one of which has a laser stuck to the side. Oh, my gosh. And it's all lining up to the home invasion the night before. They're like, okay, great. But Detective Caruso also notices the cabin's windows are covered and it just- A couple of the police from Dublin PD talk about just this feeling that something wasn't right in that in that cabin, Mm -hmm. something sinister. In the bathroom, they found Nyquil syringes, and out the back they see a white convertible Mustang. They have a look around the car. They check the GPS. It includes several addresses spanning huge distances. You know, from Las Vegas to Huntington Beach, maybe. In the trunk of the Mustang. They found a utility belt and inside were a pair of swimming goggles that had duct tape all over them to block them out and blonde hair stuck to it. Oh. Detective Misty, she is a freaking legend. She throws herself into the case. She finds cases of attempted assaults that happened a few years earlier in 2009, which kind of match in a few different ways. But if it's so, if it's the same person, she's building a pretty convincing story. But these 2009 victims who she speaks to, They were brunettes and she's becoming really obsessed with figuring out who the blonde hair belongs to because she knows there's another victim out there. So she keeps looking into it. 
Meanwhile, Denise and Aaron are staying with family, not feeling safe in their own homes, and Denise is receiving death threats on social media as, and they're still not sure if they're going to be prosecuted for committing a hoax. Their attorneys are trying to get police and FBI agents to look for the kidnappers, but they seem more interested in looking into Denise and Aaron instead. That must be so frustrating. So infuriating. It's around this time, too, that Denise and Aaron discover that the lead FBI agent, David Sesma, formally dated Aaron's ex, Andrea, who was the target of the kidnapping. And they go, oh, I reckon that's a bit inappropriate. So their lawyer flags it as a conflict of interest and inappropriate to the uh, Office of Inspector General. And they respond that the authorities have found it to be unproblematic. Oh, that's good. They're like, no, no, it's fine. I think the system there in that, what was it, Vallejo? Vallejo. Vallejo. I think, I think, I hope they haven't changed anything. Yeah, I think it's a good system. Yeah, the system of, no, they said it's okay. It's It's fine. I think it's all fine. It's cool. It's, hey, chill. Chill. Uh, we got a puzzle maker on the force. Okay. And he's making a puzzle. You need to just <laughs> Let chill. him work. All right. <laughs> Let the puzzle master work. <laughs> so, desperate for clues, Detective Misty Caruso decides to look into the Mustang, um, which records show had been stolen seven months prior from an address in Vallejo. So, she contacts the registered owner of the Mustang. She tells him that Dublin PD have his car and that it was involved in a home invasion case. And the owner of the car says, hmm, have you heard about the Mare Island Creeper? And she hadn't. She looks into it. So Mare Island, it's a little island connected by a bridge to Vallejo. And in 2014, there were a series of Peeping Tom cases recorded by students who lived in the area. Night after night, the residents were being harassed and police weren't doing anything about it, which seems crazy for Vallejo. Um, They're so good there. So these students took it into their own hands. A couple of them discreetly followed the man home one night, discovering that he too lived on Mare Island. Um, and they also, I don't know how, but they figured out that he was a former Marine and a lawyer. I don't know how they figured that out, but they did. So, Misty Cruz is like, holy shit, Matthew Muller is the, is the Mare Island Creeper. And the Mustang owner said that the Mare Island Creeper case has stopped around March of 2015, around the same time as that Gone Girl case. And Detective Cruz is like, huh? the what case? And this is so wild that police departments don't really share info because to find out what this guy was talking about, she Googled it. Oh, my God. Found all these articles and stuff and was like, oh, fuck. There's got to be a better system. And no, she's, they said it's okay. It's fine. <laughs> Sorry. And she's watching, she's like reading articles. Um, she sees that so much of the puzzle she's been working on is falling into place. <sighs> she's also a maker. Denise was taken from a house on the street where the creeper had been reported. I think she's a solver. She's oh, a solver. It turns out that's probably the better thing to Key be. Better. Yeah. yeah. The Mustang GPS had Huntington Beach on it where Denise was dropped off. And then she saw a photo of Denise, 30 years old, white, blue eyes, blonde hair. She's like, this is it. I've done it. So she calls Vallejo PD. Nothing. They it- don't answer. <laughs> They don't even have someone on the phone they there. They fucking- They're hopeless. She keeps leaving and messages. Would, they don't return her call. And she would have surely an internal number, not just any number. Yeah. It's like yeah. it's cop to cop and, and they don't answer. Eventually she gets on to someone and they say, oh, look, the FBI's taken over that case. You'll have to speak to them. She's like, okay, give me the phone number. So she, she calls the FBI. She speaks to David Sesma. She tells him they have a suspect in custody that she believes is linked to the kidnapping of Denise Huskins. Um, the FBI are a little kind of lazy about it, but they're like, yeah, okay, whatever. So they go and they go and meet with Dublin PD, and uh, Dublin PD show them all the evidence collected at the cabin. Um, they 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 show like the fake gun found at the cabin, which matches the photo the kidnapper had sent oh, to the crime reporter, and then there was the photo of the goggles, and that left the FBI agents visibly shocked because <laughs> they were like, oh shit, <laughs> it's real. This and, actually happened. And they freaking had their man. So, Denise and Aaron were clear to the allegations of performing a hoax. And in March of 2017, Matthew Muller pled guilty and was sentenced to a total of 40 years in prison. He never revealed why Andrea was the intended target of the crime. FBI agents informed Denise and Aaron that at the conclusion of their investigation, they believed Muller had acted alone and would not be pursuing any other suspects. Which obviously angered... Aaron and Denise, who remembered quite clearly that had been multiple men in their home mm. the night of the kidnapping. Yes. But according to one news source, it's it was, ta- it was like in the court reporting about uh, these court proceedings, it was like the pre-recorded message Muller played gave them the impression there were multiple people there. Oh, okay. So, I don't really- it's Like in, in the background, he's just like, ah. Oh, or like he had having yeah, fake Bluetooth speakers on or something. I don't know. The truth is not entirely clear, but Aaron and Denise certainly feel that 
there were other people involved, um, but but only Matthew Muller has been charged. And he did all that stuff to the press just because he wanted to gloat about what he'd done and was that kind of... <sighs> yeah, hard, hard to say why he defended Denise and Aaron or Denise specifically. Don't know. Um, it was obviously not right. Yes, that's right, yeah. But, oh, my gosh. He'd so been- it was all just an elaborate thing because he's a sex... Like yeah. he's a a sex offender. He's yeah. a rapist. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah. It's it's and he he had been because he was a Harvard Law graduate. He'd worked as a lawyer, but had been disbarred a few years earlier for like lying to a client or something like something strange. Um. Yeah. So it's parts of it are still kind of murky, but. With the guilty party behind bars, that doesn't just magically make Denise and Aaron's lives go back to normal, obviously. No. Their lawyers were keen to see the records of the Vallejo PD's investigation and very quickly it became clear that the police had taken very little action at all, instead focusing their energy on convicting Aaron and Denise, which we already know. A couple of these are infuriating. So remember when Aaron took the polygraph test and the FBI agent said it was clear that Aaron had failed? Actually, he hadn't. Um, the report read that the test had been completed with unknown results because, like Matt said, these tests are mostly bullshit. So, but they just said to him, "You failed." Yeah, tell ag- us the again, truth again. Just trying to get in his head, get him yeah. to crack, get him to be like, "Okay, yeah, you're right. I killed her," but he didn't. That's why you should get a lawyer. Yeah, that's the one well, that's that why I did. <laughs> that's, why, that's, why, that's why I've done what I've done. The other one, this is the one that infuriated me the most. Um, while being interviewed by Vallejo police, Aaron told the cops that the kidnappers were going to contact him on his cell phone, which you'd think might be a good chance to trace a call. But the police put Aaron's phone on aeroplane mode and when they turned the phone back on the next evening, that's when they saw that actually two phone calls had been made to Aaron's phone. Had the police just let the phone calls come in and trace the calls, they would have been able to narrow down the location of the kidnapper within 200 metres. Oh, my God. <laughs> they could have actually found and it. He, and they're in a cabin, so there's no other places around. Yeah. yeah. So, he would have known. Hopeless. They're in there. Could have found her quite easily. Isn't, I mean, how disheartening that this goes on. Like, mm. you think of- all the all the cases that never had a misty stumble upon it. Totally. And they're just still a couple of people who've been falsely accused of making up a crime or yep. or whatever else. But geez, that's um that's a grim thought. How would you trust that you would never trust the police again? You would never trust believe that you're safe. Like yeah, it's it's horrendous. I'd be moving to Dublin in Ireland. Yeah. Um <laughs> big time. Or anywhere named Dublin. And I'd ask Misty to be my neighbour. Yeah. That would be nice, actually. Uh, In 2016, Aaron Aaron and Denise sued the city of Vallejo for defamation. None of the officers involved in the case were disciplined. And, in fact, Detective Mustard was awarded Officer of the Year in 2015, that very year. What? Officer of the Year. Wow. Denise and Aaron had an out-of-court settlement for $2.5 million and- in, in an incredibly frustrating case and story, there's at least a happy ending. Um, Aaron and Denise met with Detective Misty Caruso at the end of 2017 and Denise told her that all she wanted during this entire ordeal was for there to be someone in law enforcement to call a hero and that Misty was Denise's hero. It was really nice. Misty, like, Misty says in the documentary that she got into law enforcement because a friend of hers was sexually assaulted and she wanted to make sure that she was stopping it from happening and catching people who did it and putting them behind bars, and she fucking did that, which is very cool. Wow. Um, and I it, I think as frustrating and awful as it is that their case was so terribly handled by police officers doing shit work, it was the amazing and thorough work of another police officer that eventually saw the case be solved. So Misty really and, – and, like, the Dublin PD in general. It's not just Misty, but she was sort of the detective on it. So, and despite going through something so horrific so early in a relationship, I don't think they'd been together very long. Um, they stayed together. They got married. Um, they moved away from the area. They have two little kids now. In 2021, they published a book about their ordeal. It's called um, Victim F, From Crime Victims to Suspects to Survivors. And, yeah, in January of this year, um, the documentary American Nightmare came out as well. And I think that's probably the reason Christina suggested the topic. She just suggested it in January. I think um, – the other person who'd suggested, Matt, uh, had listened to a Matt podcast Mustard. about it. Matt Mustard. 
Um, and because why would he have wanted? I mean, I'd be embarrassed. I know. But I, wouldn't I, guess be, he, I wouldn't be telling people to fucking talk no, about it. Sorry, him. I forgot. This was award-winning work from him. <laughs> yeah. He won an award. He got a little medal for this. What the crap? I know. It's but- wild. And, yeah, there's not heaps of um, press cover- coverage about it or writing about it. So, a lot of this report is based on that documentary. But, basically, it's so harrowing and unimaginable. I'm choosing to take solace in the fact that Aaron and Denise have been able to move forward with their lives despite this Awful experience. Yes, wow. Um, that is a happy ending yeah, that, to them. That, I mean, obviously, there's no way there wouldn't be a lot of trauma, yes. a lot of therapy required. Like, I can't imagine Physical. their life is super easy, but they've been able to move forward and that made me feel a lot better. No disciplinary action yeah. for any of the cops yeah. is uh, the opposite. If you want to finish on a happy note, I want to <laughs> finish on a super grim note. <laughs> They're all probably uh, getting promotions right now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they probably have. <laughs> Who Fucking cares? Hell. Yeah, I know it's wild. It's it's such a wild story. The documentary is great. Um, I highly recommend it. It's very gripping, and yeah, fucking really brave and and cool of Denise and Aaron to like share their story the way they do. And I hope I hope they're I hope they're okay. You know, it's really nice. It and it basically ends with. Um, it's them sort of talking about their kids and Aaron just sort of goes, because they've got two little girls and Aaron's like, uh, you know, I want them to grow up in a, in a world where they're safe, but basically I want them to be like their mum because if they're like their mum, they're going to be okay. And it's really nice. You're like, that's, that's so nice. But, yeah, what a freaking ordeal. Isn't that a wild story? That is so wild. One of the most wild we've ever had on the show. Yeah. Say. Welcome back, Dave. Oh, I'm glad I was here for that episode. Just because Imagine it's- getting a guest in and making them sit through that. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, come to our comedy podcast and then on Little Wednesday gear the 25th. From yeah. my Weird Al last week. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> but yeah, no, I was absolutely gripped. And like you said, like at different times, you think, no, it must be this person. Mm. No, yeah. they must be lying. But that's because Jess was manipulating us. Yeah. yeah. And you played- Remember that. That wasn't our biases. Yeah, no, that, that was, was Jess. That was me you being- played us like a fiddle and it felt great. It felt good. <laughs> felt good. Felt like the devil was going down to Georgia. <laughs> Which oh. is the name of a fiddling song. <laughs> and a, a, a song US I like state. to fiddle to. Yes, that is true. Oh, holy shit. Could is have been. A state? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Uh, it is in my mind. It's a place that I go. Yeah, okay. <laughs> wow. Also, uh, Henry Lee's the name of a Nick Cave song. All right, so <laughs> couldn't get that out of my head every time you mention him. <laughs> Does that bring us to everyone's favourite section of the show? I think it might. I believe it does. I mean, I feel like over the last month this has improved a lot, Um, so it'll be a bit jarring to try and wedge Dave back in, but let's see if we can. We have been doing it really well and certainly not taking it for a real fucking walk. Yeah. Uh, The dings have been fantastic. The dings have been I should say that right off the bat. But we'll see how we go. We'll see how we go. Anyway, yeah, no, welcome back, Dave. Welcome back. Happy how, to step back how and about maybe- some of these bands we've booked? Oh, yeah, we've been booking some good bands. <laughs> we have been booking some good bands. You, do you have a backlog of book bands? Yeah, I've just I opened up my email and I can't believe how many people have said yes. Okay, okay. great. Oh, perfect. We've got some great acts coming good. up tonight. All right, fantastic. Well, uh, before we get to that, really, this section of the show, it's about 30 to 40 minutes uh, now that Dave's back. <laughs> While Dave was gone, it was three, four hours, um, <laughs> where we thank some of our great Patreon supporters. These are the people who keep the lights on and the mics on uh, on this podcast. Ooh, that's nice. I like that. And, uh, yeah, if you want to get involved, you go to patreon.com slash pod. Dave will be able to tell you about some of the uh, rewards or whatnot you can get if you get involved. Well, if things haven't changed since I've been gone, what we do is, yeah, we reward people with uh, bonus episodes. We put out three a month, soon to be four. Wow. Soon to be four. Plus you get access We're to expecting. The- Plus you get, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Plus you get access to the bat catalogue, which is over two hundred. The bat catalogue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you don't know about the bat catalogue? We actually I once did a report on the bat bomb. Do you remember that? Yeah, nah. and Batman. Get- <laughs> yeah, of course oh, I don't a, remember that. That wasn't a bonus episode. So uh, but also you, that. you can get be part of the Facebook group, which is a lovely place. Honestly, it's, you think Facebook group? How good could that be? It's lovely. It's yeah. nice in there. Lovely. And uh, also lately, get- it's really been filled with people saying, "Don't worry, he's fine." <laughs> And that's true. Which and how has been nice. true. That's been true this whole time. I'll Vindicated. Read, I was reading that thinking, that's true, I am. Fine. <laughs> and you also get uh, discount tickets. You get to vote for topics like this one. Yep. I think that they. you said that maybe you were worried it was a grim topic. I think it was so gripping that I'm glad they voted for it. If I can be completely honest with you, I put up four 
three were really freaking good. I was like, oh, I'm on a hot streak here. These are going to be amazing. And they did, they voted really well. And I'm excited to do the others at another time because they awesome. were great. So right. some some smoke and hot suggestions in the hat lately, I just want to say. I was looking. These were mostly sort of fairly recent suggestions and they were hot, hot, hot. And anyone can suggest. Yeah. You go to uh, dogonpod.com and there's a link there saying submit or something like that. Yep. I would say, uh, you know how uh, the mind can uh, come up with some pretty full-on stuff. When yeah. you say this is so grim, I was expecting it to be way worse. Yeah, right. And obviously it was horrible, but yep. I was expecting it, you know, to be the worst thing of all time. But we've done like the clown. <laughs> we've done Yeah, we've done William some bad H. ones. William H. Macy and stuff. We've before. done William H. Macy. <laughs> That's not terrible. Oh, what a terrible life he's led. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Didn't he pay to get a kid in a uni or something? Yeah. That was him? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was it was a pretty flimsy episode, but um, also his brother, <laughs> the clown killer, whatever his name was, Gacy, Gacy, not Macy. Both William H, though? Doesn't matter. I don't know. Um, so, what we do, we uh, patreon.com slash do go on pod, you get involved. One of the levels is the Sydney Schoenberg level or above, and if you're involved in that, you get to give us a fact, a quote, or a question, which actually has a jingle that goes something like this. Fact, quote, or question. Ding. Huh. He always remembers the ding. <gasps> She always remembers the thing <gasps> and the jingle. Uh, and, yeah, people get to give us a fact, a quote, or a question, or a brag, or a suggestion, or really whatever they like. They also get to give themselves a title. I read out four each week. I read them out for the first time on the show. That is just to forgive me for anything that's pretty full on that they write or any uh, mispronunciations I make. Mispronunciations, Which is, yes. yes, a bit of comic irony there it's as I word. mispronunciate that one. And that. Uh, so, the first one comes from Cheryl Engelsman, a.k.a. mother of a 95-pound toddler. Conversion there, 43 oh, kegs. Thank you. I was about to convert 43 it. kilo toddler. Is that huge? That's, that's incredible. You were, I think you were- in- I think I probably achieved that weight about <laughs> 18. <laughs> yeah. Like, genuinely, right? Yeah, maybe 16. Your comedy weight was 59, right? 52. 52. So 52, and that was in my early 20s. Wow, that's a big toddler. Congratulations, yeah. love it. Congratulations on the weight of your Todd. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Cheryl's offering a brag that's slash nice. suggestion. Okay. I mean, the brag's already happened. Yeah, it's already happened. You got a big Todd. Uh, but let's see if there's any it's more to big it. Big toddy. Uh, hey, mates, my brag is that I recently adopted a Great Dane. Okay. 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 Because <laughs> okay. I was a little concerned for that child. I but was, a Great uh, Dane. I was getting ready to sign them up to the, the Boomers talent uh, pathway. I have no connection to the Australian basketball team pathway. But uh, adopted Great Dane named Searsha, uh, which is an Irish Yes, name. Shersha. Shersha. Well, uh, phonetically. Searsha. They've written Searsha. So, okay. it's their dog. Okay. Their rules. Yep. And she is a 95-pound toddler. I posted about her. Is that grown since I just said before? No, I already said 95. Don't mind me. I posted about her in the nicest corner of the internet. Oh, if yes. Anyone wants to see her adorable face. She's very cute. I like that. If anyone wants to see her, sign up to Patreon. Love that. <laughs> um, she's a handful, but a total sweetheart and a giant goofball. My suggestion is something I also brought up in the Facebook group, that you lovely pod hosts come out with some dog slash pet merch. Mm-hmm. Bandanas were offered as a good option. I know most of the listeners with pets would love to have their furry, scaly friends rep the pod. And we already have a couple of models ready to- <laughs> Absolutely. I'd love that. Can I just double check furry slash scaly? Are they the two kinds of pets you can have? Yeah. Feathery? No, it's not listed. Okay. (laughs) 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 Who am I to say? (laughs) Could you get a little scarf for your parrot? That'd be cute. That would be really cute. That'd be really cute. A little parrot with a scarf on? Adorable. (laughs) We should do that. We should. Yeah, absolutely. Little, yeah, little uh, neck. Yep. Neckties. What about a bow tie? That'd be cute. Our dogs rock yeah. a bow tie sometimes. And do we call like the, this is, you're going to hate this so much, but the uh, the pet range is like dog go on or something like that. Yeah, but I mean, that's pretty narrow, isn't it? Yeah. But what about cats? Dave, you've, you've forgotten there are other, we just said. We just said scaly. scaly. What about lizards? Yeah. Do yeah. lizard on. <laughs> what about like 
earmuffs for your goldfish. How about we just say- <laughs> That's good. How about we just right say, do go on pet range or something. Like, yeah. It'd be a bit more inclusive, Dave. Okay. Well, obviously, I dog, know you're very, dogs, dogs are the superior pet. You've, you're very myopic when it comes to pets. Does that mean one-eyed? I don't know. Doesn't matter then. Uh, the next one comes from Chris Torres. Hang on. I I did a conversion to find out how big my toddler is. Okay. And he's 39 pounds. Wow. So, this is more than double your tod. Yeah. Well, I've uh, done an intent search for the world's heaviest toddler. <laughs> and uh, in <laughs> 2003, uh, a guy from Russia, Dam uh, Zambulat Katov, was the, according to Guinness Book of Records, the world's heaviest child. Okay. At four years old, he weighed 56 kilos. Wow. Be so tall as well? Like, uh, well, at seven, he was four foot three and weighed 100 kilos. Wow. Yeah. I think he had a, you know, doctors were unsure of the cause of his, his fast growth. Yeah. That's impressive. But Sorry uh, to interrupt you there, Matt, to tell you how heavy my dog is. No, that's all right. Um, I meant to say monocular, uh, one eyed, myopic means uh, not able to clearly see objects that are far away, which I guess for Dave are cats, <laughs> fish, yeah. parrots and other kinds of pets. Yes, yeah, certainly Whereas birds. he's got a dog in the face. He can only see what's yeah. in front of him and, and that's, that's his a dog. Yep. That's a Humphrey. Lovely dog. That's a Humphrey. <laughs> <laughs> that's a Humphrey. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the next one comes from Chris Torres, aka Official North Carolinian. Ooh. <laughs> official North Carolinian. Is that right? Living in Ohio with family in Gary, Indiana of the pod. Love it. I can't Incredible. believe how many things Chris ticks. If you there. have any connection to a creamy in Vermont, you've done it all. Oh my god! You know what I realised while you're away, Dave? What? Uh, I've already told Jess this fantastic news, and you better believe she was not particularly excited about it. Alistair Tremblay Birchall lives <gasps> in Quebec, which shares a border with Vermont. Oh my gosh, creamy territory! Yeah, you could. You've got a man on the ground. Oh my gosh! You could get feet in a creamy. Tongue on a creamy. Wow. He could be my, my creamy. He could get feet on a creamy? <laughs> yeah, I said boots on the ground. Oh, feet oh, on okay. a creamy. Okay. Yeah, I yeah. lost control of the gotcha. uh, analogy or whatever oh, that my was. Cre- my creamy proxy. <laughs> <laughs> he could. You could zoom him and he could like really in, in incredible detail Do describe the te- texture. Technology yet where you've got like a little sock that you can, <laughs> you know, like some sort of a sock connected to a computer and you put your tongue <laughs> <laughs> and then someone at the other end yeah. has like a, you know, has like an animatronic tongue <laughs> that can lick things so- for you. <laughs> Have they got that yet? <laughs> Have they got that yet? So, you know that you would just be, start with an ice cream and then quickly just go onto the ground, suck shit, suck shit, suck shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, no. oh, oh. <laughs> Even if you invented that with the sweetest intentions, it would immediately be sex. <laughs> <laughs> would have made it. It would sell so well for long distance couples. <laughs> but then you just would be going to town on each other. <laughs> but you would be so annoyed. No, no, no it's for it, creamies. It's for creamies. It's Not for- that kind of creamies. It's been, I've been misinterpreted. <laughs> it's Not cream people- pies, creamies. It's creamies for- all around. It's for people the trying, to, <laughs> trying to enjoy Doll Whip from afar. Yes. <laughs> anyway. Um- <laughs> Uh, sorry about uh, that run up there, Chris. Anyway, Chris, <laughs> as a fact, hey gang, I'm back, uh, back, brackets T, and then out of brackets T with another fact. Oh, I see what you're saying. <laughs> I'm back with another fact. <laughs> this one is dog themed. Oh my god! Oh my back god! To back dog. Oh, I'm, I'm listening because I can see it. <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully, this is an excuse to bring back dogoon. Oh my god! Oh my See? god! It makes sense. What the fuck is happening right now? Give the people right what now. they want. And this one isn't even North Carolina themed, so hopefully Jess is more inclined to think it's fun. Mm. In the past, I'm uh, still you've pretty bored. Chris's uh, facts about mini golf courses, uh, flowers that <laughs> eat things. Uh, oh, I thought that were great. Why? Well, I mean, but that's not up to you, is it? Um, yes. Yeah, so, uh, am I in charge of great facts? <laughs> no, <laughs> that's a great fact. I'm grim. You're dull. Yeah. I'm yeah. Fun. It's fun. That's just no. That's just how we are as people in <laughs> yeah. terms of facts. Oh no, it's the same. It's the same. <laughs> uh, on episode four two six, the sixth Backstreet Boy, in the fact quarter question segment, Matt made a joke about dogs only seeing black and white, while the Dugo on logo is blue and yellow. Did I get that comedic timing right, Matt? 
<laughs> I don't remember. My face. I'm sorry, Chris. I have no memory of this at all. I think that was when I just got back from America and I did the- Because I wasn't on that episode. Oh. I did the end bit and I remember it being a bit delirious. I was going to say, I was like, I don't think you were on that episode. Did I get that comedic timing right? I reckon you probably I nailed d- it because Matt's timing is- I mean, I'm you. I mean, I'm doing my timing through you. So, if anything, so, yeah. it's probably even more good timing. Mm-hmm. And I'm well known for my timing. That's right. Uh, my fact, ironically, dogs only see in blue and yellow. <gasps> the retinas in the eyes of animals are filled with light-sensitive cells called photoreceptors. Animals have two kinds, rod photoreceptors. They can receive rods, uh, which are <laughs> sensitive to the intensity of light. Oh, okay. I got that. Quite, I should have read the end of the sentence. Mm. I just assumed it was people called Rod. Yeah. Uh, Dogs can ca- see Rod. Yeah. Rod, Todd, this is God. Classic. Um, That's from The Simpsons. Okay. Uh, so, they've got the ones that can in, uh, accept Rod into their lives and hearts and- Oh, sorry, light. Well, then Rod we trust. And cone photoreceptors, which are sensitive to the colour of light. Cones are terrible at detecting really low levels of light, which is why colour washes out in the dark. In most animals, these, I mean, if your aim, Chris, was to make a fun fact, I think getting deep into the scientific- I mean, I was so gripped for the first sentence, but the last 12, I've really- It's diminishing returns, Chris. (laughs) Well, it goes on. In most animals, (laughs) these colour-sensitive cone photoreceptors can be further subdivided and named based on the colour of light they are most sensitive to. As Matt in particular may know, many apes, humans included, have three kinds of cones. Uh, sensitive to red, green, and blue light. Uh, primates came back uh, a week or so ago, by the way. Congratulations. An episode about uh, Kong versus Godzilla. The colours we see as a result of our brains comparing signals went uh, sent to it from different levels of activation of each type of cone. I uh, Just letting you know, Chris, that Jesse is browsing Facebook. <laughs> uh, <laughs> That's true. I'm on the Patreon group. So, we can only see red, green, blue, or some combination of the three. Uh but having three types of cones- <laughs> Sorry, Chris, can I just say, <laughs> dull fact confirmed. Chris, dogs can see in blue and yellow. Oh, End I was, of fact. What, would you have said that was fun? That was fun to me. No, because I already knew that, so I, I didn't know oh. it would be fun. But yeah, I, I guess I'd go, yeah, it's well, kind of fun. Considering that logo, I would have never thought that Humphrey could see that logo really well. That's Humphrey like, can that's see it. Can see. It Everything else, that's the first thing. He's like, whoa. Oh, my God. That's why he listens to the show. Uh Hello, Humphrey. Sorry. Can you let Chris finish? Sorry, Chris. Please, do go on. I'm just going to keep scrolling on Facebook. I only have two types. Uh, This is cones. Exactly which colours those two types are most sensitive to varies among animals. But in dogs, they happen to be sensitive to blue and yellow. So, counter to the common misconception, (laughs) the dogs are colourblind and thus only see black and white. Dogs can actually see blue, yellow, including really dark yellow, which looks kind of brown. Chris is the the (laughs) So, you picked the perfect possible (laughs) colour palette for a dog on logo. Books forever. Oh, that might have one day. I'm back. back, I'm back. I think that confirmed dull to me. (laughs) Books forever. (laughs) Uh, You like words, Chris? (laughs) A bit of fun there, Chris. I like that. I thought that was a fun fact. And I think because you're hammered at home, it's going to stick with me. Cones. Um... I think a few people are smoking on some of those right now and <laughs> loving this. Dogs seeing blue and yellow. That's me smoking a cone. <laughs> I thought that's you kissing a dog. Well, no, I-, I thought that's you putting your tongue into that computer thing. <laughs> I want to taste this cone. <laughs> Let me lick your dog's eye. Put the tongue up to it. Everyone this week so far has had a ch name and this one is no exception. Wow. Charlie. Whoa. So we've had Cheryl. Chris and Charlie. Sorry, Cheryl I'm, isn't I'm got a chip. I'm trying to get back into it now. <laughs> official guy. Oh, Charlie's official guy who met Matt, who met Matt in Chicago invited him. Oh my god, this is long to come to an improv show, but was kind of half joking and didn't expect him to come because I know he's not big on improv, and it kind of felt weird to even bring it up in the first place. But then he actually came to the show, which was very surprising. But I appreciate it, and I thought the show was just okay. I mean, it wasn't bad, but we've had better, and there were like <laughs> twelve people in the crowd. But Matt seemed to enjoy himself. But then again, he also seemed kind of drunk. <laughs> I was. And I appreciate it either way. And then also we sat at the bar and talked to talked for like two hours. And he's a pretty cool dude, I think. Well, Charlie. That read to me at the start like 
you were not actually supposed to go. You know, it was <laughs> yeah. like embarrassing that you actually turned I up. I mean, don't invite me. But by the end, it's it's lovely and wholesome. But at first I was like, oh, Matt, you've done it again. So we had a Patreon catch up in Chicago, which I've talked about on uh, Matt Remembers. Mm-hmm. A, pod- a one podcast of our bonus I hope never happens again. Well, it's unlikely that I will remember it. But- and then for lunch, I think I had Mexican. <laughs> and, oh, uh- I'm talking of, oh, I feel hungry for lunch. Okay, mate. <laughs> You're, you're talking about a lunch you haven't even had yet. <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, Fuck, so, he got me. So, we, we got up for uh, a Patreon catch-up in Chicago and he told me there and it was just rotating patrons coming through, just round after round of beers. I end up with Swibesy and, oh, my God, why can't I remember Swibesy's wife's name? She's got an equally awesome name, but Swibesy has pushed it out of my head. It's like Finnesby. But anyway, I say it differently wrong every time. Mm-hmm. But they they took me to the Guinness, the first Guinness uh, pub outside of brewery outside of Dublin, and then they were driving home. And I said, "You're not driving past uh, oh my God. this improv place." So they dropped me off there, and then I, you know, anyway. And to hear more of this story, you can subscribe to our <laughs> Patreon. Matt remembers two uh, exciting episodes. <laughs> Absolutely See, gripping, scrolling Facebook. <laughs> I don't know. Chris got me in the mood for um, uh, explaining things. Uh, so, Charlie has a question. That was only his title, not yeah, his. Yeah, great. Hello from Chicago. I really want to go to Melbourne this year for the Comedy Festival, but the problem is that I've never travelled alone. Never been outside of the USA, except I spent one day in Canada, but that doesn't count. Oh, my God. You immediately lied and fessed up. Beautiful. Uh, and, in fact, have hardly even been outside of my home state. I wanted to see the world and I figure Australia is an easy place to start. Yeah. I mean, you do live- It is very far. Y- you've got Mexico and Canada. Straddling. That's st- st- arguably st- easier, yes. Straddling, yeah. We are far away. Um, but I, I think it's an easy place to- Culturally. Visit. Yeah. It's like it's different enough that you'll be like, oh, what? that's different. Whoa. But there's no language barrier yeah. and we're pretty friendly and like it's safe. Chicago you know? felt to me quite- I don't know. It felt- Quite a lot like home, like yeah, like right. Melbourne. I think it's like Melbourne's like a smaller Chicago or something, mm. and also different in other ways. Like their dishes are deeper, um, and they have some awful drinks like Malort. Oh, that's right. Uh, but anyway, if you want to hear more about that, listen to Matt Remembers. Oh, God, save yourself. <laughs> uh, <laughs> people loved it. I just don't really know how to go about it. Being three people who live in Melbourne and who seem to go on international trips all the time, that's more you, Dave, I think. What advice would you give a first-time traveller? What should I bring? How long should I stay for? How can I avoid spending too much? What are some fun things to do in Melbourne on your own? The uh, American dollar is very strong. Everything will be cheap as shit for you here. It'll be fine. Yeah, um, I like- uh, Jess is saying that as someone who's about to go the opposite yes, way. Yes, it's going to be very expensive. If I'm thinking about do I want to go there, one of my number one first stops is a little website called YouTube.com. Oh. And you can usually type yeah. in top 10 and then name of city, and there's either like Expedia have like professional ones of like most major cities in the world, or yep. you can just have vloggers that are just walking around saying, here are 10 things I did, and you can just sort of see a vibe of the city a bit mm. like that. Yeah. And at the end of the 10-minute video, you'll probably go, yeah, I want to go there, or that doesn't look like my scene. So, I think yeah. that's, that's a really good place to start. So, you want to do that for Sydney, you want to do that for Melbourne, for Brisbane, Adelaide, wherever you want to go. I think you want to do, like, definitely come to Melbourne for the Comedy Festival because that's a great time to be in the city. And, and it's very chicago kind of weather Yeah, too. I was going to say weather-wise, it's quite nice. As in cold and rainy. But not it's not always it's, too wet. It's not wet. Chicago freezing. It's just- It's a bit of a mix. It can be a bit chilly and it can rain, but it's not, like, yeah, it's not- so wet, you can't go outside. It's just it's turning into autumn. Yeah. But it, it, it always comedy festival always feels like the start of winter to it me. It does for some a bit, yeah. But um, start of footy season too. You also probably want to go to Sydney. Different kind of weather and just like the see the bridge, see the opera house. Like it's it's a, it's a great touristy sort of spot. Hmm. Um, but there's lots of really amazing. You can go further north. It depends on how long you can take and how long you want to take. But like you could go further north and do like Cairns and yeah. see the Daintree and Great um, Barrier Reef. Great Barrier Reef. Yeah. It's really spectacular. And again, the weather's more tropical. Go to the, the red centre. Darwin's yeah. awesome. Which um, isn't the red centre, of course, but, but different again. The thing to remember, and the thing that I see a lot of Americans on TikTok talking about, is that Australia is quite a lot larger than you think it is. And it's it's pretty hard to you can't really just go, Oh, so I'll go to Melbourne and then the next day 
I'll drive to Sydney. Like, it's it's not super drivable. These places yeah. are very far apart. If you look on the map, Melbourne to Sydney doesn't look that far, but it is like a, you know, a 10-hour or so drive. Yeah, it's quite far. It's doable, but, you know. Yeah, it should be doable. Yeah, it's doable. So, yeah, fly places. I'd say, and because you're, you're a Chicago improver, like, there's, you maybe you could link up with someone at the Improv Conspiracy in yeah. Melbourne. Who I think the guy started to- He's American. I think he might yeah. be from Chicago even, but he, like, stayed over there. But maybe there's a that's a place to sort of link up with and see if you can, um, uh, I don't know, do some- I don't know what you improvers do. Do some work together. Some shows. There'd be uh, heaps do some of, scenes. There'd be heaps of improv shows at the festival you could check out as well if you wanted to. I should say I've I got no problem with improv. Improv's fun. Yeah. Um, And I, I want to also just say on the travelling solo thing- Traveling solo rules. It's so good. There's little moments where you're like, oh, am I a bit homesick or am I a bit lonely? Um, but you get to do everything at your own pace. If you're walking through a museum and you're like, this isn't for me, you can just leave. You don't have to wait for another person to like stand at a painting for four hours and you're like, oh, I want to go. You just leave. You're hungry, you eat. You want to stay in your room and just watch TV one night because you're tired? You can. You don't have to feel... You know, obligated to do stuff that other people- Travelling with other people is great, but travelling by yourself, also great. And you can, when you're travelling by yourself, you also you end up linking up with people. And, yeah. And, you know, you can, uh, you know, you have uh, quick friendships. That's right. I would say Australia feels like a pretty safe place to travel solo as and, well. Yeah, Melbourne Comedy Festival, you've just got things to do every night if yeah. you want to. There's, you know, you could, you, you know, you'd have probably 50 shows to choose from every night. More? Less? Yeah, I sometimes, don't know. sometimes more. I can, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, shows. it's definitely, do it, do it, come hang out, it'll be so fun. Uh, not with me, though, I did not enjoy your company. Um, he <laughs> finishes by saying, thanks, guys, and keep up the great work. <laughs> your show never fails to make me laugh, and it's always a treat when I see a new episode pop up, Charlie. All right, Charlie, you've won me back. Thanks, Charlie, that's no, nice. Was, that was a very fun night hanging out, but I was- um, Hammered. I, I was a bit drunk and obnoxious. He was hammered. I remember annoying uh, uh, everyone. Uh, and we should also say we are doing shows at the comedy festival. Oh so if you're God. in town, you can, we got three opportunities to see us do live do go ons on Sunday afternoons downstairs at Basement Comedy Club. And also, Matt, you're doing a split show with Seren, so you get to see some stand ups and podcasts. If you want to come see see right. us, if you're in town, please come along. Yeah, did it in Adelaide, it was so much fun. Um, and yeah, we did a we did some Patreon catch ups there, like we did in Chicago. And I'm I'm probably gonna Jess isn't invited. Gonna do one in Melbourne as well. Yeah, Jess is. I'm busy. She's busy, but- um, You know what it is? I'm shy. Yeah. I'm an introvert. Which is fair enough. I'm on a healing journey this year. But- um, I'm all about sleeping. So, before you ask, Jess is fine. Vitamins. She was just busy that day, okay? Yeah. So, let's not make it all about her. I'm here. Yeah. Why don't I ask you about how I'm going? <laughs> <laughs> not where's Jess? But, yeah, we'll talk about it in the Facebook group a good time for that. Maybe it'll be, after, I don't know, before, I don't know, whatever. We'll figure it out. Last one comes from Paul Mellor. Okay, an old rocker from Oldham. And <laughs> Love it. Paul's brag. Got a brag. Ooh, we welcome brags. Love a brag. We will celebrate with you. Hit us. This is a wordy week because we've got another wordy one, um, which we love. Which we love. To a point. <laughs> uh, hi, guys. It's me again with another Oldham-based fact, which could be considered a brag. It may even be fun, but I'll let Jess decide. Mm. So, back in the day, well, 1991, oh, a good year, uh, I was an 18-year-old rocker <laughs> earning just enough to pay rent to my parents and get out to local pubs at a weekend. <laughs> August 17th of that year, I experienced my first festival at the home of rock, Donington. I think it's unfair to Chris that you didn't use the this voice for Chris's fact about the dog. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. probably would have been more about but please continue. That year, Monsters of Rock lineup was Queen's Rock, Motley Crue, <laughs> Metallica, and headlined by Akadaka. <laughs> it was an amazing day out. However, just a little earlier that month, <laughs> on the 5th of August, I got to see a very local band playing at Oldham's Queen Elizabeth Hall. That band was there. <laughs> and then- Was, the, and then was, that, was the, the- was there? That band was called Dare, Dave. Listen up. Oh, it's your sorry. name with one letter different. Dare, okay? Dare. 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 Not thought, there. Th that band was there. The band I saw was there. The wow. band was Dare, dare. Dave. Like the Oscoffee. Listen up. Over Dare? 
Mate, you got two ears, one mouth. Use them in that bloody race show. All right. <laughs> Shut it, toilet. That band was there, and I was in that band. Hang on. And in that band was a very young, long-haired keyboard-playing Professor Brian Cox. Yes, that's right. The good professor was, in fact, a glam rocker from Oldham. I actually met the band at the local record shop. Yes, you heard me right, record shop, the golden <laughs> disc, promoting their single, We Don't Need a Reason, so fuck off. I added that last bit <laughs> in post. I still have the autograph CD single on me shelf. Now, I'm not claiming this was great music, but it was fairly good rock music. <laughs> <laughs> not a patch on the bands at Donington that year, but it was not a bad little gig. I'll post a picture on Facebook after this goes out and see if I can find a link to the music video. Thanks for all the great episodes so far this year. All being well, I'll see you on the 7th of April at your live show with my family in tow. Take care. Okay, Paul. you've gone scary. Now I think Paul's going to murder me <laughs> at the show. He's telling me when I'm going to die. Well, We lost you for a bit there. Where'd yeah. you go? Oh, Oldham. Yeah. <laughs> Nowhere near their accent, I don't think. What's the Oldham accent, Dave? Close, it's very close to Manchester. Okay. So you do your do your Liam Gallagher then? I don't know if I do a Liam Gallagher. Oh, okay. Do your Noel Gallagher. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Subtle differences. Yeah. Okay. Do your uh, Bonehead. What's the other? <laughs> well, they got a great. Isn't one of them called Bonehead or something? One of the Gallagher's. One of the Oasis. Oh right. Doesn't matter. Um. <laughs> You're not going to do any doesn't of Doesn't matter. Okay, doesn't matter, I guess. Okay, that means, what are we doing? That's the end of the- uh, That went for like, f- that went for 40 minutes. What is this called? Fact quote a question. Fact quote a question. Thank you to Paul, Charlie, Chris, and Shezrel. Can I call you Shezrel? Just a quick question. I'll wait. Uh, the next thing we like to do- <laughs> The next thing I've lost it. I honestly, the that air, real, oxygen yeah. stopped going to my brain during yeah. that- during uh, that, it was years ago. <laughs> what I say during that, I meant my life so far. <laughs> uh, the next thing we like to do is well, uh, thank a few other uh, of our great Patreon supporters. Yeah, Bob, you normally I come up with a game. Came up with a game. Um. Uh. But okay, here's here's my thought because you know how there was like the Mare Island Creeper, mm-hmm. but let's not make it something that's a, a horrendous crime. But what about like. Um, some sort of uh, uh, like a, a name. Okay, we can based on where they're from. Maybe we give them a name. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe like a positive thing. Yeah, but th- but they're known as yeah. Like we'll come up with we'll some examples. Some examples. <laughs> yeah, don't yeah. waste any good examples here. I've got one. I'm ready to go. So um, Matt, do you want to kick us off by thanking some people? Sure. Uh, the rhythm guitarist was Paul Bonehead Arthur's. Sure. Uh, until the year of '99. I have no the- idea what you're talking about. Oasis. I, th- I thought their best era was in the 2000s. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Definitely not. <laughs> the Flying Birds were the band Oasis could have been. <laughs> uh, all right. So, if I can kick us off, I'd love to thank from Albion Park in New South Wales, Australia, Karen Every. The Albion Park bin reminderer. Oh, <laughs> oh I need It's bin night for me tonight. Yeah. Oh, my God, Dave. Thank you so much. Wait, Thursday, it's my bin night too. Oh, my gosh. Well, Karen's here to let you know. Karen, thank you so thank much. Thank you, Karen. Uh, not every Karen, but Karen Every will let you know. Uh, <laughs> That's nice. That's good. That's a good tagline, That's Karen. Good. Matt, that was pretty good. <laughs> yeah, I'll pay that. Oxygen's getting back in yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. This is where I come up with the good stuff. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> he doesn't know how to do anything with his mouth. <laughs> it's how he drinks, eats. How I tongue a computer. Uh, <laughs> next one I'd love to thank from Talay, maybe in Queensland, Australia, Felicity Berry. What a fantastic name. Mm, the Talay... Apple. Okay. And can but, you uh, talk Felicity us through is it? the apple of everyone in that community's oh, eye. Oh, that's to lie. Nice. Used to be, Yeah, exactly. It used to be the apple of the, the Talai apple of our eye, but now it's just been shortened to the Talai apple. Okay, that's great. That's nice. And, just, and sometimes just apple. The, Everyone's just very proud of Felicity. Yeah. The, I made a coffee at home the other day and it, the foam sort of looked like an apple. Oh, my God. <laughs> did you, that cool? did you take purpose? a photo? I sure fucking did. Look, thank you, because I don't believe you. I took it. I took a photo. What you should have done was not touched it and sold it on eBay. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you can't quite see, but the, the top of it has like oh, a yeah, little it's... stalk coming out oh, of it. Oh, my gosh. It that... looks like a little apple. Like a cartoon of an apple. Yeah. yeah. It looks like an apple emoji. Or if you turn on its side, it looks like- 
Someone uh, spewing. It looks like a Pac-Man with a tiny mouth. Yeah. Going, <laughs> <laughs> What's the, and Pac-Man's going. <laughs> <laughs> trying to suck up the things. Uh, and the last one from me, I would love to thank from, I really got to look up what umlauts do to letters, but uh, this has got an umlaut on the O. I think it lengthens them. That's why motorhead should be pronounced mood ahead. Um, <laughs> Urubru. Urubro. Urubro from SE. Sweden? Ah. Am I right in saying that? SE? I'd love to thank Joe Lease. Joe Lease. Joe Lease. Joe Lease. The Urubro Oreo. Oh. Oh, nice. Got a bit of cream in the middle. Is that right? Like an Oreo? Yeah. Yeah. Happy to be dunked. Happy to be dunked. He's a dunker. Well, they're a dunker. And oh. dunker shroom. <laughs> for your support. Arubro, the sixth largest city in Sweden. <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with it? Do you know what I mean? Like, sometimes there's just moments where I look around and I go, what the fuck are we doing? I think this episode has been a real Oreo. Yeah. You know, it's, the middle bit was a great report, yeah, but yeah. either side of that has been nonsense. Absolute okay. Nonsense. Hard brown biscuit. <laughs> yeah, no one likes the biscuit. What's happening? <laughs> See what I mean? <laughs> Dave, you should go back on leave, I think. <laughs> so, do I? Did I bring this weird energy? No, you Dave, should just save you yourself. Be, uh, we're two Hamishes and you're our Andy, <laughs> as according to one Patreon. <laughs> I'm like, sorry. I just put I had my hand out and then Jess put hers out on top of mine. I thought, oh, sorry, is that your spot? <laughs> I, oh, no, you were. Oh, human touch. Well, <laughs> oh. Okay. Oh my! Apparently, as the Andy, would you like me to move things along? Yeah, and, please. Uh, and um, thanks, some I'm people. I'm so hungry. I would like to thank from location unknown. Ooh. We can only assume they're deep within the fortress of the mole. So yep. do with that what you will. Yep. Daniel Corrigan, the fortress hole digger. <laughs> oh wow! What I th- think Corrigan made me think of like, is it the corrugated Car- island? Uh, island? Island? Oh my god! Yes. How did I finish the sentence? Kerrigan's from the from castle. the castle. Yep. And digging a hole. Yes. And, and obviously, also- he's a mole. Yeah, it's right. the deeper, the better. Oh, dug that, dug another a- hole. It's filling with water. Good stuff. That is good stuff. Great movie. Daniel Corrigan. I would also like to thank from Anchorage in Alaska. Ooh. Fantastic. Thank you so much to Katie Stachow or Stady St- Katie Stachow. Ah, the Anchorage uh, bluebird. <gasps> um, I love that. Sort of secretly goes around spreading song. Oh, that's oh. nice. Just outside windows going, oh. Bit of a warble. <laughs> yeah, right. And then as soon as people pop their head out- Gone. Katie's gone. But also, yeah. they they do notice that it's really put them in a better mood. Yeah. And they Positive go, only. And they yell out, thank you, Angerish, Angerish, Anchorage Bluebird. I just lost my mother. <laughs> and you've you've put a pep in my step. Wait, there she is. <laughs> Thanks, Bluebird. <laughs> That's right. Little little twist there. I would also like to thank from Olympia in Washington, John Hamilton. John Hamilton from Washington? From Olympia. That's cool. From the uh, the Olympia uh, <laughs> Splendor, oh, which yeah. I think is a brand of air conditioner. <laughs> okay. Olympia Splendor. Uh, so, he because, just goes around going- <sighs> Because John makes every situation cool. cool. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. He's cool in every situation. <laughs> yes. Oh, that's the Splendor's good. here. Oh, the Splendor. Thank goodness. Oh, thank goodness. And even people who don't know that niche brand of a- an air conditioner. And you just still think splendor. It's He's the- splendid. <laughs> yeah. And it's not quite, it's the Olympia Splendid. Okay. But Close. I- I'm going to call John the Splendor, the Olympia Splendor. May I thank some people? Please. I would love to thank from Oran Park in New South Wales, Melissa Ariola. Oh, is that the nipple? Yeah. Um, well, I won't I won't focus on that. Um the <laughs> Oran Park uh boob. <laughs> <laughs> the R boob? <laughs> I'm so sorry, Moisa. I'm sure you've never got yeah, that. I'm sure, that's I'm sure that's never happened before. Really? The Oran Park. Uh, uh, what about the Oran Strangler? Park? Breeze. <laughs> <laughs> breeze. Breeze. The, the Oran Park Breeze. Oh, that's nice. Just brings a freshness. Yeah. It brings, always brings a cool change. Yeah. yeah. Whenever whenever Melissa rocks up to a party or any sort of event, maybe she comes to your firm. <laughs> um, <laughs> As is our understanding. And everyone's like, oh, my God. It is we, stuffy in here. We needed a change. Yes. And here it is, here Melissa. It is. Thank you so much. You are a breath of fresh air. In fact, you're the Oran Park breeze. That's nice. That's, That's nice. What a compliment. 
Um, I would also love to thank, also in New South Wales, from Berrimbool, Jess Smith. Barrenbull, what about the Berrimbool Badger? Ooh, I like that. Yeah, you know. Because of alliteration. Badger. And, like, you know, if, you, if you're if you a bit worried about going in and, like, confronting someone, yeah. you call the Badger in. Yeah. So they will go in. They will plead badger your case. On your- so they will Badger on your behalf. Absolutely. They but not the badger, uh, just the badger. Just the badger. I like it. It's better. Yeah. The badger will not back down. Must no e- back down badger. Much easier for Jess to make merch, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't think- It feels like we have uh, not stuck at all with the idea of the creeper. Well, yeah. Until we, now. We the wanted- badger's the first one that feels like it fits the brief We wanted to more. move away from the creeper. No, but, you know, I mean, normally it's like it's like a- What do you call that? It's a it's a word that is like a thing someone does. Uh-huh. They creeps. They're the creeper. They're the badger. They badge. Yeah, uh, you know yeah. I mean? But I felt, I felt, you know, we had the, the breeze. We know what that yeah. means. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. Nice. Blender. Don't, yeah. Cool. don't look into it. You uh, know? But, We're but, up to our last one. But it could have been the Oran Park blower. Instead of the breeze, you know what I mean? Sure, they go around blowing. Sure, sure, sure. But I think all no, right. Well, th- let's stick to that new rule for the for last this one. Last okay. one. <laughs> we'll so stick to landing from here. Canberra in the ACT, I'd love to thank Kate. Now, Kate. may I propose the Canberra Creeper? <laughs> <laughs> okay, still has alliteration. Bit of yep. fun. I think that's great. Uh, looks like Kate's surname starts with M. If you're wondering if that, you know, there's that's probably you. many Kates in Canberra. Um, There's a few bloody clowns up there, mate. Kate Creeper. <laughs> what about Kate the Crepe? Kate. Uh, what about the Canberra Creeper? Ooh. Uh, they they uh, make crepes. Make crepes. Oh, they're a crappier. Yeah, they're a crappier. <laughs> we got a little a little truck. So you oh, see them yeah. at festivals and Love stuff. Those. And you know, there were people always like, yes. Actually, there was a crepe truck. <laughs> at- people always like, yes. <laughs> no, I know I am. Yes. Yeah. Crepe truck. There Fuck was yeah. there was a crepe truck at the. <laughs> New Year's festival I went to, and I had two of those crepes. I went back for more crepes. Highlight of your New Year's. It was so good. I had Biscoff and strawberry on it. It was fucking delicious. That sounds so good. Shit, yeah. Loved it. I love those little Dutch puffages. Oh, yes. There's a mini pancake. Yeah, I love those too. Gotta love them. Little bite size. I'm not mad. Banana. Mm, Oh, my goodness. Yum. Uh, Thank you so much to Kate, Jess, Melissa, John, Katie, Daniel, Joe, Felicity, and Karen. The last thing we need to do is welcome a few people into our trip to Club. We've got five inductees this week. The way it works, bit of theatre of the mind. If you've been on the shout-out level or or above for three straight years. (laughs) (laughs) If you've been out on the shout-out level. (laughs) Sorry, my tongue got caught in the machine again. Um, <laughs> Why do you have the machine attached to your microphone? Uh, look, it's very distracting. I just, as soon as we stop recording, I know where my tongue wants to be. Uh, Vermont? It wants to be in Vermont. <laughs> you say, oh, sir, ready the creamy. We finished recording. <laughs> ready the creamy. <laughs> He's on standby. Uh, so, <laughs> so, yeah, bit of theatre of the mind. Uh, it's a club. Once you've been signed up on the shout out level for three years uh, straight. You get in, you're not allowed to leave, which is a good thing. We can't stress that enough. Uh, the place is whatever you want it to be. Some people imagine it as like a beautiful uh, airport lounge <laughs> or like a Frank Sinatra style Las Vegas club. Mm-hmm. It could be whatever you want. Um, for I think Dave particularly imagines a gym where he pumps iron. Everyone imagines it differently. Exactly, because in this place, I could be fit because <laughs> it's in the mind. It could be anything. Yeah. Uh, and, yeah, there, like I said, there's five people being inducted this week. I'm standing at the door. I've got the induced. clipboard. They're being induced. Uh, they're being induced. <laughs> I've got, uh, yes, we're ex- expecting five. And um, so- uh, I'm about to read out those names before I do that. Jess is behind the bar. Yeah. She's worked on a cocktail normally. Yeah. But- What's the American nightmare cocktail involved? Um, It's got uh, blood in it. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay, wow. No, from, it doesn't from- have blood. Uh, fake blood. Fake blood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get your head out of the gutter. Yeah. It's got fake blood in it. <laughs> Where the blood, it's real got, blood is in the got, gutter. It's got some dirt. Oh, okay. It's, it's is got there fake, fake dirt? And also, I put it up on the bar, but then I go- I sort of hide around the corner and I look at you. <laughs> when was the last time you made a cocktail that was drinkable? <laughs> I forgot to mention it's also far too hot. Oh, no. <laughs> Why have you heated it up? You know that oven's uh, faulty. It's probably just as well as that means people won't want to drink it. Yeah, it don't drink it. like it will kill you. It'll probably kill you. I'm and sorry. Dave, you've booked a band. Sorry about that, everybody. Just stop heating up <laughs> the sorry. drinks. I thought it would be nice. Yeah, I mean, it, the idea of a hot toddy or something sounds very nice, right, but I forgot. not we got, too hot. we got to fix the oven. How hot is it? It's too hot. Can you just quickly check the temperature? Okay. 
Oh, it's too hot. Oh, no. Oh that, is, God. that is... It's 200 degrees. Oh, that is what way too hot. Celsius. Oh, my Stop God. Stop it. It's too hot. All right. Can you just put it in the bin or something? To the pour oven. It what? Well, yeah, at least the drink. Can we get it serviced? And Dave normally books a band. <laughs> yeah. First band, you're never going to believe it. First what? band, I open up my email. I have not looked at my laptop. I just open up the lid. First email I've seen, band confirmed this week. And we are being joined by the American metal band Ice Nine Kills, who's, I can't believe it, I've just looked them up because I didn't know too much about their, mm-hmm. their discography. Second most played song on Spotify, The American Nightman. Whoa. Whoa. Third most played song, Hip to be Scared. Oh, I love, <laughs> love a, a weird alifying <laughs> yeah. of Huey Lewis and the News, yeah. but metalifying. Yeah, that that sounds awesome. Hip to be scared. Uh, they have another one, another song called Funeral Derangements. Oh, yep. <laughs> they are metals, Weird Al, by the sounds of it. <laughs> yeah, metals, Weird What Al. a great niche to find. Love it. Uh, all right, so five names. Here we go, Dave. I know uh, it's been a while, but Dave's I believe in you. Them up. And can I just say, I've, I've listened to a couple of the episodes whilst I was away, and can I just say- it is as hard as it looks. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, if you got to the episode where I think we got Evan to do it, did we? Oh wow! I think we got. Yeah, I think we did. got Sammy P to do it. He took it for a different sort of a spin. Yeah. Evan or oh, Sammy P? I mean, the best in the biz. At Evan what? Hasn't <laughs> everything? Every business. The great one That's of the great. That's just a funny thing to say. Uh, He's the best in the biz. Uh, yeah. At what? what? Being what a, fucking biz? Being pro- podcasting. Uh, true, no. true, true, and true. Evan always has an answer for everything, so yeah. he would have been too great mouthy. too. But they're the two episodes I'm yet to catch up with when I'm listening. Yeah. going to listen through. I'm very excited because I love those guys. All right. So, we got five here. Dave uh, hops them up with a bit of weak wordplay. Jess hops up Dave because he mustn't be feeling good about himself. All right. So, first <laughs> up. <laughs> Certainly not. From Newark, New York in the United States, it's McKenna Middlebrook. Bam, bam. You're in the middle of my heart, McKenna Middlebrook. From Taringa in Queensland, Australia. Oh my God, it's Mick McConnell. My number one pick, McConnell. Oh! Uh, From Bracken Ridge, also in Queensland, it's Elizabeth Todd. Oh my God. Hot Toddies. How big's your Todd? (laughs) Hot hot Toddy, Elizabeth Todd. Uh, Not your value. Uh, yeah, no, you've, you know, your temperature's not your value, Hot, but you are like burning up. Holy shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From, um, oh my God, right here in Melbourne, Victoria, <gasps> it's Dominic Who. More like Dominic, huge part of my heart. Yes! Most of honestly. The ventricles and other exactly. such things. All the bits and pieces are you, Dominic Who. And finally from Huntington and Huntingdon in Cambridge, Great Britain, it's Cheryl Render. You have rendered me shook with how amazing you are. My God. God, it's good to have him back. Cheryl Render. I forgot how good he was. Yeah. It? <laughs> uh, thank you so much to Cheryl, Dominic, Elizabeth, Mick, and McKenna. Make yourselves at home. Please do not touch the cocktails. But every other cocktail Jess has ever come up with, they're still there, ready to go. Exactly. So, like, the first uh, so if you couple go back, hundred weeks. Yeah, yeah, if you go back maybe two years, I think there's some pretty delicious ones. Some pretty edible things. Mm. Yeah, sorry about that. Uh, that brings us to the end of the episode. Anything we need to tell people before we go, Bopper? Just that we're sorry. <laughs> About the what's the temperature now? I don't want to tell you. Oh, please, it's two forty now. Two forty is climbing. It's gone up. up. It's gone up by a lot, and I'm really scared. Jeeps. And I keep forgetting. Uh, that, um, that dirt shouldn't be at that temperature. So maybe, um, yeah, I mean, check back in next week. See if we're still here. If the oven hasn't exploded, um, you can suggest a topic over at Do Go On Pod. Uh, the, uh, .com. That's our website. You can find us at Do Go On Pod across social media. You can check us out on TikTok and Instagram and, well, Twitter, but mm, I'm not on there. Is anybody tweeting anymore? Uh, Doesn't matter. I'm not really. I haven't tweeted in a long I time now. Will Anderson's back on there. Oh, okay. Then I'm okay. back on. I, I, I stick around because, uh, yeah, like Tony Martin does his best work there. Yeah. David Astle. I think I meant more like, are any of us updating our Twitter? Oh, I do. Okay, great. Thanks, Matt. Um, oh, great. Good for you. Because I don't, and I forget every time. I'm hopeless. Uh, I'm u- what's, I'm just, what's your problem with Elon? I'm just useless. Uh, just anyway. where I come from, uh, brains should be celebrated. Elon or me? Both of you. Oh, I think thank I you. Put both of you equal. I don't think you need to feel challenged by Elon's intellect. Oh, the other thing to say as well is that our um, email and DMs are open for your apologies, which you all owe us because Dave is fine. Oh, I yes. actually am. And I'm, also I'm more than fine. I'm going great. Any I'm so questions happy. about his news, just, yeah, direct to Dave. 
Please. He is not. I keep saying it. He hasn't once said, don't do it. I absolutely have. Oh, okay. And I'm saying it again. I now. haven't been listening to you, so. <laughs> uh, and if you're looking for another podcast, why not listen to our great editors, Cult Popcher? Yes. Uh, AJ from New Zealand does a fantastic job. We love AJ. Um, you could also listen to, yeah, Primates, like I say, and who knew it with Matt Stewart. And uh, Dave, have you noticed that people are still loving Book Cheat? You're on hiatus at the moment, and the people just keep tuning in. Oh, thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in. Yeah, there's, an, I think, 98 episodes in the back catalogue. So, you know, think of a classic, I might have done it. The big 100th episode, I think. Have, have you- I'm going to jump out of the MCG? cake. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you going to give me a cake? No, I'm going to jump out of the cake. Yeah, oh, you, won't get, you don't do, get to have the cake. Do I have though. to supply the cake? Yes. Damn it. But I have to get in it. That's still quite a spectacle. If I'm- not there. I will have a tongue proxy. So. <laughs> you can taste the so cake. I can still taste the cake. <laughs> oh. um, it's it's nice to have you back because I like to get you to boot at home. So hey, do it. An absolute pleasure to be back. Thank you so much for listening to this show. We'll be back next week with another fantastic episode. That's the do go on promise. But until then, I'll say thank you so much for listening and goodbye. Later. Bye. Bye.